So this is why you should always get STD checked. Back in 2017, I met this girl and for the purpose of the story, we're just gonna refer to her as Ava. Ava and I had a very rocky friendship to say the least. She immediately showed very toxic behavior, but I didn't know just how toxic she could get until this one night. I was sitting there hanging out with her at a little get together. When it was brought to my attention that she had been sleeping with my boyfriend, I sat down with her absolutely furious and told her that I knew she was sleeping with him. She denied it over and over and over again until I told her that I had proof of it. Once she was aware of this, she told me that she just did this to piss me off. And so that's when I decided to confront my boyfriend and let him know that I knew. And he did not deny it at all. Realizing that I didn't want to take the mature route, I decided to get revenge immediately. Ava's boyfriend and I had had a thing before him and Ava, so I decided to call him up. After I explained to him the entire situation about his girlfriend cheating on him too, he was down to hook up. I went to his house that night and we linked. I thought justice had been served, but the next day I walked into my house and I was completely robbed and I found a bump on me. Stay tuned and follow my Insta. So this is why you have to be careful of people videoing you doing the nasty. So every year my town holds this event called Movie Under the Stars, where essentially a giant movie is projected onto a screen, but all the kids in my area just go to mess around with each other. So my friends and I decided to show up to this and there was another group of guys that showed up as well. And one of my friends ended up knowing one of the guys in that group, so we went over to go talk to them. And a guy who was really cute kept making eye contact with me. So I literally didn't shut up about him for the rest of the night. He ended up snapping the girl next to me saying, hey, who's the girl in the jeans? Meaning me, so all of us were freaking out and I got a Snapchat. We snapped for a bit and we planned for me to sneak out to go see him that night. So I snuck out of my friend's house, got to his house, and we did a few things, but no big deal. About two months go by and we're still talking, but we're also saying I love you. But I ended up being messaged by a popular guy around this time who wanted me to come over to his house. I figured since me and the guy that I was talking to weren't officially together, it'd be fine. So I did, but the guy ended up finding out about it. So I had to go over to his house and basically beg for forgiveness. He said he forgave me, but this is when he came up with the plan to video me, which went south. Stay tuned for part two and follow me on Instagram. Part two to my ex videoing me doing the nasty. So even though he forgave me, he still decided to video me like doing the famous call her daddy move. We continued to talk after this, but after a few days, some of the kids in school started to look at me funny. They would act super weird around me and eventually I just asked someone what happened. And they were like, well, there's a video of you. I wasn't too stressed about it. I just asked him if he would stop showing people. And he said he would, but the video continued to go around. I started to worry once my best friend's cousin told my best friend's mom. That night, my best friend's mom went over to our house to tell my dad. My dad absolutely freaked out and this is how everything went so downhill. My dad literally wanted to send me away to boarding school and we ended up getting a call from the police about this issue. Guy ended up getting charged over this video. He was supposed to do community service, but ended up not doing it, so he was just fined. I really didn't want anything like this to happen and we're now friends today. So I guess everything's okay. If you guys have a story you'd like to share, follow me and DM me on Instagram. So one time I decided to get revenge on my boyfriend by hooking up with his brother and glitter bombing his car. So back in March of 2020, I was working at this little travel stop. It's where a lot of the truck drivers would come in and I ended up meeting this really charming guy. He would stop by there often and he was really sweet and funny and we had a really good connection. So we decided to start dating. But immediately after, it got very toxic. While we were clearly in a relationship, he never wanted to put a label on things. And we would get into extremely violent fights where he would threaten to slap me or beat me. I would usually retaliate by calling him out for being a really bad father. And also, when we were doing the nasty, he would say really weird things. Like, I'm going to breed you or trap me. I'm thinking, boy. That's a really scary thing to say in bed. Ignoring all these red flags and continuing to date him, I figured out why he didn't want to put a label on things. It was obviously because he was cheating. I was upset and I told his brother about what was going on, and his brother came up with an idea for us to hook up together. And this continued to happen for a while until I felt like it wasn't good enough, and I decided that his car was going to be next. Like for part two and follow me on Insta. Part two of how I plotted revenge on my boyfriend by hooking up with his brother and glitter bombing his car. So by this time, I had been hooking up with his brother in our house for a while, but the way that my boyfriend was treating me was just getting worse and worse. We got into a massive blow-up fight, and he told me that I needed a week to get my ish together and get out. But I ended up going out with my friends and drinking for a little bit, so I was kind of in my feels. And I decided to reach out and text him to see if he would want to work things out with me. But instead, he cussed me out, so my friend came over with a bunch of glitter. So we literally poured glitter all over his seats, all over his floors. And I decided to go ahead and smash his taillights and side view mirrors while I was at it. To this day, he still doesn't know that that was me. He also let me know that he was not fond of strippers and that he would never date someone that was a stripper, so after we broke up, I decided to become one. And he would still continue to message me saying that he was going to come see me at the club. So I guess he is down to date strippers and the revenge was honestly worth it. If you guys have a story that you'd like to share, follow me and DM me on Instagram. 
So this is about the time that I ended up dating a guy in order to cover up for dating another guy. So I was kind of sort of low-key cheating at the time, but I can explain. So to provide a little bit of backstory, I was living with my biological father at the time. Not exactly what I wanted to do, but this was because of some circumstances that were going on. So due to this, I had to move to a new school and start my senior year at a different place. A few days had started and I didn't really like it very much, so they ended up changing my classes around and I got stuck in this new art class. So I walked in and immediately this cute guy walked in. He introduced himself, I'll call him Brad, and he said, hey, and we ended up talking the entire class period. So not only was he cute, but he had an amazing personality as well. So obviously I had to give him my number. There's no other option. That night he texted me how pretty I was and how he was dying to get to know me. But the text got a little bit explicit and my father ended up going through our text messages and immediately did not like this man right off the bat. So when we started dating, I didn't get his approval either. My dad made us break up. I still liked this man and was completely heartbroken. When I went to school the next day, I was told by another guy that he liked me. So I ended up coming up with a little plan. Stay tuned for part two and follow me on Insta. Story time part two about how I was dating a guy in order to cover up for dating another guy. So after my dad forced me to break up with the guy that I was currently dating because he didn't like him, and I realized that this other guy at school did like me, I figured that I would talk to Brad and tell him this little plan that I had. This new guy that liked me was very cute, but not my type at all, but he did have a better standing with my father. So I decided to start dating the guy that my dad liked, but also dating Brad on the low key. Every single art class, I would spend time with Brad and I would text him all day and we would FaceTime at night, but then I would go on dates with the other guy. That way it would be like a cover for my dad so he really wouldn't go through my phone. Well, yes, I was two-timing and this was extremely exhausting. I really felt like I screwed up when I started to develop feelings with the new guy. I tried to literally list off reasons on why I didn't like this guy, but honestly, he was just too caring and too sweet for me not to. So I ended up breaking up with him because I felt like this was going too far, and I got back with Brad and just did it behind my dad's back. But Brad then left me for his ex, so I ended up sneaking over to the other guy's house, and that's how I lost my virginity. Now I'm happily married to a totally different guy three years after this whole situation. If you guys have a story you'd like to share, follow me and DM me on Instagram. This story time is a warning to please be cautious if you ever speak to someone over the internet. So when I was 14 and still in high school, my local area was going through a weird stage where someone was trying to contact a lot of the 14 year olds and see if they wanted to join an escort agency. This was done over Facebook and of course, most of the girls just ignored these messages. However, my friends and I thought it'd be funny if we ended up messaging this person back. Obviously bad idea. We weren't serious about meeting up with this person. We really just thought it was a big joke. However, once I was by myself, I continued to message this person. They kept commenting on how beautiful I was and said that I was like a sister to them. I was obviously very impressionable at 14 years old and was wanting all the attention I could get. So I continued to message the person on the other side of the phone for the next couple of weeks, not realizing that I was being groomed. After the next couple of weeks, I was sitting in class and I got an extremely panicked message from my mom saying that I need to come home immediately and that she needs my phone. I guess a family friend of ours had told her about the messages and had also seen a lot of the escort advertisements. So my mom read through the messages, quickly called the police, and the conclusion was to block the account and be more careful next time. I thought it was case closed, but I was wrong. Stay tuned for part two and follow me on Instagram. Story time part two on how I was groomed over the internet at the age of 14. So after the police took several statements from my mom and I, and I was told to block the account and just be more cautious, I thought everything was done. But three years later, I was sitting with my friends when I got a phone call. The police had contacted me saying that my statement had come up again in another case. This is when they let me know that it wasn't an escort agency at all. It was a man who was sitting by his computer and messaging young girls to come meet him. He had been doing this to hundreds of girls for the past 15 years. The next couple years of my life were filled with police interviews and statements, waiting for actions for me and his other victims. The guy had a trial but pleaded not guilty, which meant that we all had to go to court. The court date was set, but obviously the coronavirus became a huge issue, and it was set to be moved to another date, which I was very thankful about because I was seven months pregnant with my daughter, and just overall fearful of what would happen. So this guy had a warm out for his arrest and he didn't show up for his plea bargain so he was put out as a missing person which we were all notified of but that scared me to death however we ended up getting a phone call recently saying that they found the man and he had taken his own life and that's how everything ended i hope everyone stays safe and if you have a story you'd like to share follow me on instagram and dm me so this is about the time that my toxic best friend tried to sleep with my dad. To provide just a little bit of backstory, we'll call this friend Jordan. And I met her over this past summer and it turned out we both had kids around the same age. So of course, wanting my kid to have a little bit of interaction, we decided to do play dates together. Our kids started hanging out so much that we got really, really close. And I honestly considered her to be really trustworthy. So I decided to invite her to this family cookout. And that's when things really hit the fan. From a distance, I saw herself introducing herself to my dad giving herself a little hair flip and blatantly flirting. I would like to add that Jordan has been happily married for years. So watching this flirting get worse, I decided to confront both of them. I was like, yo, I do not approve of you hooking up with my dad. He's 20 years older than you and you are married. She was like, okay, and I thought it was left at that. So months go by and I have her over to help me take pictures for OnlyFans. I was doing like a little promotion thing and she offered to hop in the pictures with me, which I thought was totally cool. But then her husband comes home to surprise her. And then I kid you not, he looks over her shoulder and sees her sending them to my dad. Like for part two. Storytime part two to my toxic friend trying to sleep with my dad.
So after Jordan's husband came home and saw that she was sending my dad the OnlyFans pictures we took, he turned around and got upset with me and accused me of trying to set them up. He told me to get out of the house, but then followed me trying to confront me at the same time. I called my dad soon after to get his point of view from the story, and he said that she just willingly sent him. He never asked for any of them. At least that's just what he claims. And now it's been almost two months of this battle, and I've barely been able to speak to my own dad. She has tried multiple times to become my friend again, and I decided to even test her to see if that was possible by giving her some information that was not true to see if she'd tell my dad. My dad knew almost immediately. It's kind of a bummer because her husband was a really cool guy, but I no longer want someone like this in my life. Follow me on Instagram for more content, and if you have a story that you would like to share, DM me. So this is about the time that I almost got arrested for sneaking into an abandoned hospital. So about an hour away from where I live, there's this abandoned hospital and me and three other friends had went there previously to do a little photo shoot, but it wasn't until another night that we decided that there was still spots that we hadn't explored in there yet. So we picked up another friend and we stopped by a store and we grabbed some flashlights and drove an hour out to the abandoned house. Pretty much the entire area surrounding the hospital is abandoned too. So there's a bunch of broken down neighborhood houses, a school, a gym, a church all just eerily gone. So we pulled into the parking lot and got out and got all of our stuff ready to explore. And this time we were able to check out the entire thing. Here's a picture of what it looks like during the day. So you can only imagine what this looked like at night. And the whole time we felt like we were being watched. During this, two very intoxicated men show up and they ask if they could join us with our exploring. They were kind of cute, so we said yes. But that's when we saw flashing lights from outside the building. The cops showed up and blocked the entrance. So we knew we were gonna have to make an escape. Stay tuned for part two and follow me on Instagram. Story time part two, I almost got arrested after sneaking into an abandoned hospital. As soon as we realized the cops showed up, we tried to make it to the center of the building. Two of my friends and I were somehow able to make it across the entire hospital and find a back entrance where we were able to hide out for a little bit. We started to work our way around the building to try to get to our car in the front. But as we did that, a cop started walking by, so we had to hide and duck in the grass and trees. We had to get across the street and go through another patch of dirt in order to get back to my car. But the thing is, two of my other friends were still inside with the intoxicated boys. They ended up falling through a hole in the floor and falling down on top of each other in a pile of broken glass in parts of the building. This was like the bottom basement. Somehow they were still able to make it out of there by using the stairs that were completely messed up. By the time that they had gotten out, the cops had went to another part of the broken downtown. So as we were approaching the car, they were running out of the building. We all hop into the car and catch up on what happened. The two girls from inside the building had really bad glass injuries. So we immediately went to the gas station to get first aid. Follow me on my Instagram link below and DM me if you have a story. So this is about the time that my best friend spread a rumor that I had an orgy with 15 girls. So in my freshman year of high school, I became friends with this girl that we can call Sarah. I started to get red flags immediately after we became friends. After people started to notice that we were hanging out, I got so many DMs on Instagram telling me to watch out for her. Anyways, I didn't believe them and I continued to be friends with her for a while. But then she got really jealous once I started to talk to this guy. I turned him down so I thought that she would calm down too, but she did not. I could really feel that something was off. The next time we hung out together, she hid her phone around me. I knew that this was really weird because one, it had never happened before. And two, just like, why? Is something gonna pop up that you don't want me to see? I also went over to her house to hang out and I noticed that her parents were whispering a lot and kind of looking at me funny. But again, I just brushed it off until I got a DM from an old friend from elementary school. She stated that Rachel told many people that I had had an orgy with over 15 girls. So this is when I decided to get revenge. Storytime part two of when my best friend spread a rumor that I had an orgy with 15 other girls. So once my old friend from elementary school hit me up and let her know that she was spreading this rumor, I finally believed what people had said before. Soon after this, I found out she kept a journal about me. Kind of like a burn book, but just for me. She wrote every detail about my life in it. It included things like arguments that I had with my family, and also every single person that I had added on Snapchat was listed there. So to get revenge, I sat down to make a TikTok. The purpose of it was to call her out and clear my name so that everyone knew that what she was saying was a lie and so that they could know how actually crazy she was. This TikTok ended up being removed almost instantly. Yet yeah, little did I know she had screen recorded it and sent it over to the principal. Less than a week later, her and her boyfriend were doing the nasty in the parking lot of the school. So I decided to respond by taking a video of it and anonymously sending it to our principal. Sarah ended up getting expelled and I got away with a detention. It was honestly kind of worth it. Follow for more story times in my Instagram's link below. Story time about my emotionally abusive ex-fiance and his psychotic family. So when I started college, I met this guy on Facebook. And I mean, he was a dream boat. We hit it off immediately and I knew that he lived in my hometown, even though I was out of state for college. And when I tell you this guy was sweet, I mean, he could put Nicholas Sparks novels to shame. 
While looking back, a lot of the stuff was cringy. He was my first relationship. Well, one day when we were on the phone, he was talking about how excited he was to be married one day and adopt animals together. I was totally excited about it with him and he decided to propose on the phone on the spot. He was like, please don't embarrass me. I'm down on one knee in front of everyone right now. And so I just said yes. Well, I thought this was the beginning of my happy ending. Things got worse. He became extremely obsessive and controlling. He would blow up my phone whenever I was in lectures and get a hold of the college admissions office when I wouldn't respond and would yell at me if I fell asleep because he thought I was ignoring him. I would literally wake up to text about him hurting himself or selling my nudes. I was so scared that he was actually going to do something crazy that I left school and started driving back to my hometown. Once I got there, I met his family and realized just how messed up everything was. You won't believe what happens next. Follow me on Insta in the meantime. Story time about my emotionally abusive ex-fiance and his psychotic family. So once I got to town, I was finally able to meet his family and he told them that I went to an Ivy League school and got in only because I was autistic, which was just untrue. I immediately noticed that the relationship between his mom and him were completely off. They both had each other as their wallpaper on their phone and she acted as if she had a crush on him. When we decided to introduce both of our families together, his mom told my mom that she's sad that I don't look more like her because she's beautiful. Then proceeded to say that it's nice that her son spends so much time with me even though I'm homely looking. She was also a therapist and claimed that it was her job to manipulate people and control their minds. Yeah, I bet that's the person you want to see when you're down. Because my boyfriend was in the military when he went back overseas, I was pretty much forced to be on Skype with him 24-7. It didn't matter where I was, and if I didn't respond, he would post horrible things about me on Facebook. Or he would send me videos of cats or puppies getting eaten by snakes to get back at me. I didn't watch them because they were so upsetting, but I was still too scared to leave him and I was entirely sleep deprived. Stay tuned for what's next and follow me on Instagram. Story time about my emotionally abusive ex and his psychotic family. So I was still not prepared to leave him and had to be on Skype with him all the time. In the bathroom or in the shower. If I refused and asked for privacy, he'd tell me how horrible and how ugly I was. And that he'd end his life because of my cruelty. The only time that I didn't have to talk with him was whenever I was hanging out with his mom. And when I did this, she would spend the entire time talking about him. She would tell stories about him and show me pictures. And in the pictures she took of him, he was either shirtless or sleeping. And the weirdest thing is that she said she taught her son how to be a good lover. Whatever that means. She would also frequently tell me that I was going to hell for having sex with him. And she only knew this because she would log into his messages and read them. She talked about my body all the time and tried to give me tips so I could be prettier. This went on for months until I eventually made the decision to break up with him, and I had to move in with a friend because he kept sending scary things to my house. He would send stuffed animals with their limbs or head removed. He would also send empty envelopes, probably just trying to get me to come outside. Not long after this, he sent his cousin to try to kidnap me, and he said that he was doing this all in the name of love. Thankfully, this is over now, but if you have a story you want to share, follow me on Insta. Story time about how I fell for a pathological liar. So when I was 14, I had a really good friend who had a boyfriend. I had never met him before until one day I saw them both walking together. I introduced myself and they ended up breaking up later on. That's when he slid into my DMs on Facebook. At the time, I literally didn't make the connection that they were the same person because I'd only met him that one time. Long story short, we messaged back and forth a lot. I ended up taking the bus and hooking up with him and we pretty much spent every day together since then. Everything seemed great and then things went downhill in a very scary way. He would constantly flirt with other girls on Facebook who were literally all bots and he would change his cover photos to pictures of them. He would literally just lie and make up excuses on why he was doing that. But I was still kind of young and he was 17. Then at my sister's wedding, he ended up exchanging info with one of her best friends. And one night when I was gone, he told me he was hanging out with her. She later messaged me and said that wasn't true. I came home to confront him and he screamed at me and threw me across the room. He beat me until I passed out and then woke me up by pouring a bottle of water over me. Somehow he manipulated me into staying with him past this and things got even worse. Stay tuned for part two and follow me on Instagram. Story time part two on how I fell for a pathological liar. Being in this abusive relationship, I felt completely alone. I stayed with him for a while longer, but it all built up to this one moment. I told him that I was so tired of him hurting me that I was just gonna hurt myself. And he responded with, you don't know anything about pain, and he locked me in a room. He pulled out a gun and pointed it to me and handed me a knife. He said if I wanted to just kill myself, just go ahead and do it. Obviously, I didn't, but this was just another form of his psychological abuse. While I didn't leave him that night, I soon moved to Arizona to get away from him. For the first time, I was alone and without him, but I was able to help myself. I started working out, reading self-help books, meditating, and fixing my mind. I went from me begging him to stay to him begging for me back. The message that I have is that no matter how alone you feel, the person that can help you all along is yourself. Please take the time to find your own inner peace and never let anyone blind you from what you deserve. Show some love to the girl who sent in this story. And if you guys have a story that you would like to share, follow me and DM me on Instagram. My ex threatened to kill me and then shut down the school with a bomb threat.
and it ended up on the news. So me and this guy that we'll call Charlie dated on and off from my freshman to sophomore year. We ended up breaking up because he cheated on me. But during my junior year, he was dating one of my friends who was a senior. He wanted her to go around the school and find a spot for them to make out, but she didn't really feel comfortable with this. So I decided to grab her phone and hide it from her so she wouldn't be able to leave with him. He found out that I had her phone and he approached me. He told me to give it back and I was like, no, it's not your phone. Well, he decides to grab my wrist and threaten me. Later that night, I got a screenshot sent to me saying that I was lucky that he didn't have a knife on him like he normally does. Well, the next day in school, we all walked to the counselor's office, me, his girlfriend, and some other friends who all had screenshots of this text. He literally followed us because we were with his girlfriend. The office gets us set up writing statements about him, but also told us that he would need to write one too. So once he was finished writing his, he leaned over to my friend and then threatened her by pulling out his knife. This is when he blows things quite literally out of proportion. So stay tuned and follow me on Instagram. Storytime part two, my ex threatened to kill me and then shut down the school with a bomb threat. So after he turns around and threatens my friend who's helping report him, he rushes out of the building and we turn and tell the office lady what he just said. She tried to call for him to get him to come back, but instead he ended up just bolting across the campus. They released my friends and I to go back to class, and everything was normal for about two class periods, but then in the hallway on our way to our third period, they made everyone evacuate to the fields. They didn't even tell us why we were being evacuated, and we had to wait out there until it was all cleared for us to go back in. And once we were back in our classrooms, we were told it was a bomb threat. Everyone ended up finding out that it was Charlie who made this threat. It actually came out that he was threatening people with an unknown substance in a vial that he kept in his backpack. Come to find out, it was just makeup, like powdered makeup, that was unmarked. To this day, we don't know why he had makeup in his backpack and why he was saying that it was a bomb, but it was literally all reported on the local news in our city. Follow me for more story times and add me on Instagram for more content. Story time about my extremely toxic best friend. We'll call her Kim. So Kim was always extremely obsessive with me. She would always question me anytime I was hanging out with someone that wasn't her. I thought it was maybe just some sort of codependence, but then I realized how toxic she was after I got a boyfriend. The second that I told her, she was like, we have to test him. We have to see if he'll cheat on you and I can be the bait. And I was like, um, absolutely not. Yet she went ahead and did it anyways. She messaged him saying how lonely she was and was flirting with him. Like, who does that? For some reason, I still told myself she was trying to be a concerned friend. But many months later, after I got a new boyfriend and then we broke up, she reached out and started flirting with him and being extremely touchy. We literally had a rule that we couldn't get with each other's exes as girls should. But I confronted her one day and I was like, what is going on with you and Brad? And Kim admitted that she had feelings for my ex. I was like, he literally has a girlfriend. Don't be a homewrecker. You'll just be a rebound. But she went ahead and got with him anyways. He broke her heart 24 hours later and she came to me crying and I just sat there like this. But then her obsession with me got worse. Stay tuned for part two and follow me on Instagram. Story time about my extremely toxic best friend. So for weeks, she was still hung up over hooking up with my ex. And anytime I was talking to someone else, she would always ask if it's a boy or a girl, and then she would go out of her way to be close with them. So at this point, we pretty much just had the same friend group. Everything was shared between us. She was completely obsessed with whoever I was in a relationship with at the time. She would ask so many questions, accuse me of stealing her crushes, and would go through my phone. When she would read through my text, she would give me a whole entire lecture afterwards about how she'd never say or do the things that I do. I told her that I was just trying to have normal conversations with these guys. She also started talking about my body a lot. Kim would talk about how she was too flat and she wanted boobs and a butt like me and then obsess over it for days. She even had the audacity to try to get other people to spread rumors about me. She did everything in her power to make the people that were close to me hate me. Thankfully, she is now officially out of my life and annoying another girl. Choose your friends wisely and if you guys have a story that you'd like to share, follow me and DM me on Instagram. Story time about how I found out my dad was hooking up with other men on Craigslist. To provide a little bit of backstory, when my sister was 16, she came out as bisexual. My dad, being homophobic and conservative, kicked her out. So this set a tone for when I was born. I was raised to be anything but gay. If something looks, smelled, or seemed straight, he forced it on me. ATVs, monster trucks, whatever. My mom, on the other hand, was a lot more kind-hearted. She let me use her makeup and nail products and essentially anything that I was interested in, such as gaming and fashion. Because of arguments of my dad cheating, my parents decided to get a divorce. But they did have joint custody. When I would go to my dad's, it seemed like his homophobia was getting worse. He would blast adult entertainment on the TV and bring home girls from his little biker gang. One day, I accidentally left the AC on and it flooded the apartment. This led to a massive argument between my dad and I. We started arguing about everything, including the girls that he was bringing home. I stated that I didn't like girls in that way, and that's when everything clicked for him about my sexuality. Then he kicked me out. I was homeless until my mom was able to come get me. Years later, I got a voice message from my sister saying, Dad's gay. Stay tuned for part two and follow me on Insta. 
Story time about how I found out my dad was hooking up with other men on Craigslist. I absolutely did not believe my sister whenever she said that dad was gay. I was like, absolutely, there's no way. What's the proof? And I guess my dad had given his grandson, my nephew, his old laptop. On this laptop, he still had his ads up that basically said, come leave money on the seat for services. And it had a picture of his white truck. I was still in denial for the longest time because of how homophobic my dad was. But we decided to watch the Craigslist account for a bit. And during a time that we knew that he was dropping off our grandma in Florida, he posted on Craigslist using that exact rental car that he was using. Even though I was pretty much convinced at this point, it was later verified by a family friend who had seen him at a brothel that this was in fact true. He also was a locksmith for a living and used this job title in the email associated with the account. So for that upcoming Christmas, we compiled all the evidence together, put it all into a stocking, and set it out for family Christmas. Follow the guy who sent me this story, and if you have a story that you'd like to share, DM me and follow me on Instagram. Story time about how I got an insane stalker from working at a strip club and professionally cuddling. Professionally cuddling is like platonic touch therapy. I'm essentially paid $100 an hour to listen to clients vent and non-sexually cuddle them. I met lots of different clients, both good and bad. You can always tell who's good or bad by their karma. A karma is like a review. One of my clients who was especially respectful was named George. And I will tell you why George is very sus later on. He was really chill and he would take me out to do anything I wanted to do, such as restaurants or mini golfing. Even if we weren't cuddling, he'd still pay me gotta get that bag. While I did spend a lot of my time with him, I did have other clients. One person after him that we'll call Tim left a review on my karma, saying that I was the best cuddler. The next day, I woke up to the site banning me for inappropriate behavior. There was fake inappropriate screenshots sent in, where someone was clearly using photos you could easily find on my Instagram. And the text literally said, I'll even let you touch my butt. Like, who even talks like that? Then Tim sent me a screenshot of him getting a message from a random number. That's when I realized it may have had to do with his review. I quickly got my account back because I let the site know I was being harassed, but this is when things got worse. Stay tuned for part two and follow me on Instagram. Story time about my crazy stalker that I got from professionally cuddling and working at a strip club. So not long after I got my banned account back, I received a message from a random number telling me to delete my account by 10 p.m. that night. Or else they would tell my family that I was professionally cuddling. They sent my mom, dad, and stepmom's number in the text, so I knew they were serious. I was like, who are you and why are you doing this? And they claimed that they were an old friend from high school and that they were extremely concerned about me and that the old me wouldn't have done this. This didn't sound like anyone I knew, but I decided that I was just going to go ahead and tell my parents because I did not want anyone holding anything over me. So I let my parents know and they were extremely supportive. And when I didn't delete my account and they reached out, my mom clapped back at this person and said if they were actually my friend, they would support me and not conceal their identity. Fast forward a little bit, I started working at a strip club. I thought the soccer stuff was done. Not long after I liked the Facebook page of the strip club I was working at, I received a text from a random number asking if I worked at that strip club with a photo of me from that Facebook page. This is when I got an even bigger threat than before. Stay tuned for the next part and follow me on Instagram. Storytime part three about my crazy stalker that I got from professionally cuddling and working at a strip club. So after my stalker found out that I was working at a strip club, he sent me my next threat. Because he found out through Facebook, he got a hold of all my friends and family list. Guys, I honestly recommend keeping your Facebook friends private. And he was going to tell them all by 10 p.m. if I don't quit. I picked up the phone, started yelling at him, and all I heard was silence on the other end. So then a Facebook page named Kathy, who was like an old lady and obviously was a fake Facebook, sent this message to everyone with the photo of me working at the strip club, including my grandma. Like, are you trying to give my grandma a heart attack? So I had to explain to everyone that I was working there, but not as a stripper. This is when George reached back out to me, saying that he also got the same message from Kathy. But how would this mysterious Instagram and know to message him? He was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're working at a strip club with all those dirty old men. He offered to help and said I should quit. And that's when I put the pieces together that he was my stalker. I was able to compile the evidence together and get my old account back, which he'd banned again. And I haven't heard from him since. If you have a story like this, follow me on Instagram and shoot me a DM. Story time, my toxic best friend outed me to the entire school. So one day, one of my best friends from a neighboring school decided to move to my school. And she was extremely upset because her best friend over there came out as bi. So I ended up using this as an opportunity to come out bi as well. And she was like, well, it's okay for you. I just got really close to her. We'll call the girl Becky because no one likes a Becky. And we can call her friend Heather. So fast forward to after the situation had calmed down, we decided to all go prom dress shopping. So Heather and I were talking and we really hit it off. And I think Becky legitimately forgot about our sexuality because we were all talking about how much we have in common and we brought that up as well. She just looked at us and was like, oh, I forgot about that. And she just shrugged it off. But we continued to hang out for a few weeks. One of these weekends, we all went to church together and the sermon was about how God accepts you no matter what your sexuality is. But of course, Becky turns around to us and says that Heather and I could never date because it would F everything up. Later that day, 
day, Heather actually ended up admitting that she had feelings for me. And this is when Becky lost it. Stay tuned for part two and follow me on Instagram. Part two of my toxic best friend outing me to the entire school. So at the beach later that day, Heather and I decided to tell Becky how we felt. She freaked and wouldn't talk to us and locked herself in the bathroom. And we had to tell her that it's fine, we won't date, just so she would let herself out. I thought she was being entirely selfish, not wanting her best friends to be happy. And then she literally took my phone and went through all of our texts together. She woke up the next day, all ready for Heather and I to be together and completely apologized. And then when we went to the mall that day, she walked away from us to go look at the hot guys, but then turned around and got pissed at us for falling behind. And this is why she said she didn't want us to date, yet we weren't even dating. She said she felt like she was gonna have to choose between Heather and I because of the whole situation, and I guess she just picked me. Becky became extremely codependent and didn't want to leave my side. She was pissed if I spent time with anyone else and basically forced Heather out of my life. I ended up running into Heather and inviting her to my 18th birthday, and this is when Becky had her massive breakdown. At my birthday, she outed me to everyone at the party, my mom, and Heather's mom as well. My Insta is linked below for more content. Story time. So I was accidentally a homewrecker. So the regular dating sites just weren't doing it for me. So I started dating on a fetish site. I soon matched with this guy around the end of March and he was so attractive and we decided to meet up. Obviously this was more for the purpose of hooking up, but we got along so well and he acted like he really liked me. He was the vice president of a massive company, 23 years older than me and also had lots of money which made him one big intriguing package. We started to meet up several times a week, but his only rule was we weren't allowed to meet on weekends. And I was never allowed to sleep over. I just figured it was because he was busy. But things progressed and we were still seeing each other in May. He introduced me to all of his coworkers and he was super affectionate with me in front of them. And he also introduced me to his receptionist as his girlfriend. However, things went way downhill when he picked me up from my house one day. He was making out with me and driving out of the neighborhood, and then I looked down and I saw a ring. He goes, uh, this is just so the girls at the gym don't flirt with me. And I was like, dude, I know you work out at a private gym. So that's when he admitted that he had two houses. One for me and one for his family. Stay tuned for part two and follow me on Instagram. two of me accidentally being a homewrecker. So of course I freaked when he said that he had one house for me and one house for his family. Like what does that even mean? So he said that we'll go back to his place and he'll explain. And I was like, no, I want to know what's going on right now. So he pulled the car over and he said that he's married to a woman who hasn't been home a lot because of COVID. She's a nurse. So he's been lonely and she was too vanilla for him. Then he told me his real name. So he had given me a fake name and a fake social media for months. I broke down because I was so pissed. And he kept saying that he cared about me and wanted to keep things the way that they were, so that's why he wasn't telling me. And he says that it wasn't hurting his wife or kids because they didn't know. And that's when I slapped him and told him that I couldn't believe that he made me into a home wrecker and I asked him to take me right back home. When I got home, I blocked his number and then I went on Facebook to look at pictures of his wife and kids. And I thought about reaching out and telling her so many times, but I was so scared that he was going to release pictures of me if he ever found out. None of his friends or coworkers ever said anything, so I'm sure he's just done this a million times. My Insta is below. Follow me and DM me if you have a story. Story time. My boyfriend cheated on me with not one, not two, but 26 different girls. And like all of these relationships start, we met on a dating app. As I was just casually scrolling through, I came across him, James, and I thought that he was so cute. So I obviously decided to hit him up. And we had a really, really good connection. But one hesitation that I had about him is that he was on his phone a lot, sometimes even ignoring me in the process. But we continued to date for about three years. We were still really young at the time, just 18, but we were very serious about each other. And we decided to make a step to move in together. He was currently living with his grandmother, so I decided to move in with them. His grandma and I got along so well, we were basically best friends. So it worked out. One day, his ex randomly showed up. And because of this, it led to James and I getting into a massive fight. It got so bad that I decided to leave and stay with my mom for a few days. And while I was over, I got a request to join a closed Facebook group of 26 different women. Stay tuned for part two and add me on Instagram. Part two to my boyfriend cheating on me with not one, not two, but 26 different women. So obviously I was like, what the heck is this? Why are people requesting me to be in their Facebook group when I don't know them? And immediately I was greeted with some questions. And I already had a little bit of an inkling that it had to do with James because of his ex showing up. But a lot of the girls wanted to know if James and I were still together. 
And I was like, yes, we've been dating for a few years. Most of them said that they had been dating James for a few months, but some of them said years. So we were all literally dating this man. Even though this was difficult to process, they all had screenshots with proof and they all had nasty pictures that he had sent them. A lot of the girls lived in different states too. He would just falsely promise that he was going to save up money and move with them. When I went home to go confront him on this, he said that all 26 of them were lying. He even said that some of them were his family members, which is a disgusting excuse. I'm not even for sure on why he thought that would be the lie to use, but I broke up with him that day. Follow me on Instagram and if you have a story you want to share, DM me. Story time. I was kidnapped by someone that I thought was a friend. So I was in desperate need of a girl's trip, so I hit up my three friends that were outside of my state, Maggie, Sarah, and Amber. All fake names, obviously. I made plans and arrangements so that I could come visit them. Another friend of mine that knew them offered to drive me down. His name was Max. I was super, super thankful for this because my family didn't want me to drive there by myself. So I made sure they had his and my number before I took off. But the second that I got into the car, I had a really weird gut feeling. My stomach started to turn, but I didn't listen to it. I kept messaging my friends how excited I was to see them the closer I got, but then they just stopped messaging me. They wouldn't answer my calls either, and Max pulled me over to a gas station saying that we're about 30 minutes away from our destination. So I thought. I needed a bathroom break so I went inside the gas station, but that's when Max took me by the arm and walked in with me. He wouldn't let me leave his side even for a bathroom break, and that's when he took my cell phone away and I knew that I was in trouble. I still didn't say anything out of fear, but after we got back into the car he gave me some juice and then I passed out. Stay tuned for part two and follow me on Instagram. Story time part two, I was kidnapped by someone I thought was my friend. So after drinking whatever he gave me, I woke up after a few hours and I was not with my girlfriends. I was three hours away from my home and I didn't know this at the time, but I was at his house. My family knew that they hadn't heard from me in hours and started to get worried. They tried to get a hold of me, but obviously couldn't because I didn't have my cell phone. So they called Max and I literally watched this man answer his phone and say that he didn't know me and doesn't know what they're talking about. Almost immediately after this happened, the cops called him. And I have no idea to this day what the cops said to him, but whatever they did, it worked. He helped bring me back to my house safely. And come to find out, Sarah, Amber, and Maggie were all in on it. They knew that he was obsessed with me and planned it so that I would spend the weekend with him instead of them. We pressed charges, but he really only got a slap on the wrist. But he's not allowed within 50 feet of me or to live in the same town or city as I am. Even though this happened when I was 18, it still haunts me at 28. Please speak up if you feel like something is wrong. Follow me on Instagram and DM me your story just like this one. Story time, our house had to be cleansed of a demonic presence. I had just gotten out of a relationship that I had been in for five years. I had to pack up my stuff from his house, move out, and I was mentally all over the place. One of my friends that I'll either tag below or in the comments had just bought a house during this time, so it was kind of perfect for me to move in with her. The house was beautiful, had very cottage vibes, but there was something about the shed in the back, and I'll insert a picture. It was filled with religious symbols and maj podge all over the wall. There was lights in there like people were trying to grow, and it just seemed like a lot of teenage experimentation happened back there. But overall, the house was nice and was totally checked out by the inspector. Soon after I started to move in, that's whenever spots would occur on the ceiling. It was happening a lot on my side of the house as if there was water damage. However, we didn't know where the water damage was coming from and she had had the house inspected. This is when she started to have extremely vivid nightmares that bled over into the day. She would wake up and see shadowy figures hanging over her. I kind of just thought she was tired due to night shift at first, but that's when I got my first sleep paralysis episode. It gets way worse, so stay tuned for part two and follow me on Instagram. Story time part two of our house being cleansed of a demonic presence. So my roommate's nightmares and hallucinations were getting worse and worse. When she would drive home from work, she one time literally thought someone was hurting themselves in the car next to her and then would walk into the house and see something standing over her. But again, we just thought she was tired due to night shift. However, a few days later, I ended up waking up and not being able to move my body. All I could do was look around the room and I felt someone petting me. All I could do was lay there while this thing talked to me and pet my head but I could never see her. And I know it was a her because it was a female's voice. This had me freaked out and not wanting to sleep for days. But soon I was able to get over it and forget it. One night whenever I came back with one of my guy friends, we walked into the house and from the back we heard, hey, are there any people here? We both just looked at each other like, oh my God, did you actually just hear that? Except I heard it in a female voice and he heard it in a male voice. He told me to stay right there and he scanned the area to make sure that there weren't any people there. And there weren't. We knew this was getting bad and we were going to have to call someone. So my roommate called up someone that she knew that did house exorcisms. The worst is yet to come. Add me on Instagram. Story time part three of our house having to be cleansed of a demonic presence. So my friend reached out to a lady that she knew and told her the situation, told her about the house, 
and the lady was very intuitive. She knew that we were not going through very good times in our life and that there was probably something here feeding off of us. On top of that, it was gaining energy from a negative male presence. And she mentioned that potentially this male presence could have been doing drive-bys, just like my ex had been doing. She said she'd be there in a few days, but that the rotting of the house was going to get worse. A few days later, on a day that I know that my ex came by, the entire roof in one of the rooms collapsed, and I'll insert a picture. So she was right. By the time it got to her coming, she was able to examine the house and give us a full assessment. I guess whatever teenage experimentation was going on in the shed ended up letting in something and then was feeding off of our weakness. Not only that, but the spirits were watching my roommate from her window looking into her mirrors, which faced her bed, so make sure you never have mirrors facing your bed. The exorcism included absolutely everything you can think of, and the issues we were having stopped for the most part after this. Stay safe and follow me on Instagram for more content. Story time. I found out my boyfriend cheated on me with his aunt. So this guy that I had a really big crush on at my school had just recently broken up with his girlfriend. And so I was kind of just there to like comfort him and be a shoulder to cry on. You know the drill. And pretty soon he asked me to be his girlfriend. We dated for like a total of six or seven months. And during this time, it was kind of insane with the gaslighting and how controlling he would get with me. He would literally say that he would kill himself if I ever left him. And I had been around his aunt a few times and gotten a weird vibe, but nothing like super significant. But one morning, around the end of our seventh month mark, I woke up to so many missed texts and calls from his younger brother with text and picture proof of him sleeping with his aunt. After all of this, I confronted him and he still denied it, even with the proof. I just asked him how he could ever do something like that to me. And then he admitted to it, but said that it wasn't cheating. We were officially over after that. I messaged him to check on him one time and he responded with, I never loved you, please stay blocked. If you wanna know where I got this jewelry from, check out Interstellar Jewelry linked below. And if you have a story that you would like to share too, add me and DM me on Instagram. Story time, my boyfriend tried to kill me so he could have my life insurance money. So I decided to go on Tinder to look for some potential matches. And lo and behold, a guy named Jared was there. He was adorable, he was charming, and we had multiple cell phone calls before deciding to meet. We met at Red Lobster and it was like fireworks. He was so romantic and looked like a six foot something cowboy. He took me to a wildlife bird refuge after dinner and I instantly fell for him. We dated for months and everything was mostly good. However, he was just very pressuring for things. And I didn't want to take things too fast. I was 21 and he was 31. Eventually, this just gave me some bad vibes, so I decided to cut off the relationship. But a few months later, he called me saying that he couldn't forget me. He had been married before and his wife had passed away, so I felt very sympathetic towards him. He had a really nice job, making over 150 k a year, and he said that all he wanted to do was take care of me and my child. So I moved in and things were good again. I would wake up in the morning, he would make me coffee, and I would help him with his kids. But I noticed that my weight was starting to go down. And that's when I realized he was putting something in my coffee. Follow me on Insta and stay tuned for part two. Part two to my boyfriend trying to kill me to get my life insurance money. I was not feeling very well and my parents were extremely worried about me, especially once they found out I only weighed 88 pounds. I knew I had to have been really, really ill, so my parents drove down five hours to rescue me and I was immediately hospitalized. That's when I was able to put together the full story on what was going on. He started putting all the money that he was making into my bank account, but he didn't let me have access to it. He would take out loans in my name, making it look like I was making money. And my life insurance policy added to half a million dollars. During this time in the hospital, I was going through severe withdrawals from whatever he was putting into my coffee. But the second I stopped drinking it, I started to gain weight back. I was thinking that maybe he had done this to his previous wife. However, when I looked her up, I found out that she was still alive. They were just divorced. Later, I was able to find out that they even moved back in with each other. Make sure you don't ever get too blinded by love to realize that you're being taken advantage of. Follow me on Instagram, and if you have a story, DM me. Story time, how I catfished the girl that my brother-in-law was cheating with. So my brother-in-law always had a bit of a cheating reputation, and he definitely gave me the worst vibe. He had even cheated on my sister before, but they forgave each other and worked things out. Whatever. But I knew that something was up once rumors started to fly again, and so did my sister. And there was one particular girl on his phone that was very sus. So my sister got the number and we decided to set her up. We didn't really know how much she knew or if she was aware that he was married, so we just pretended to be him and asked her to come over. And since they had been hooking up, she was down to come over. So we sat and waited, and she walked in expecting to see my brother-in-law, but instead she got my sister and I. When I say she was shocked, I mean she was shocked. She wasn't furious or anything, however, she kept acting weird like it was all a big joke. She was like, oh my god, I had no idea he was married. Which you can't blame her for everything it takes two to tango. However, I still think you should be aware of who you're seeing. But she agreed to confront him with us. Follow me on Instagram and stay tuned for part two. Part two on how I catfished the girl that my brother-in-law was cheating with. 
So he was still at the house, just hanging out upstairs, had no idea what was going on downstairs when we invited over the girl. And once she agreed to confront him, we decided to walk on upstairs. So she walked up and literally called this man by his first name. And he denied knowing her. Like we were in shock. Like we caught you. Like here she is. How are you even going to deny that you know her when she's calling you by your first name? But she just kept laughing and he just kept denying it. It was extremely uncomfortable and super weird. She literally knew everything about him and even walked over and tried to be like all cutesy with him. And still, he denied. So we just ended up making her leave and I literally fought this man. My sister was upset and shocked, but I was way more furious than she was. It's one thing for people to hurt you, but not the people that you love. Luckily, she is done and no longer with him. At the end of the day, we need to know our self-worth and set high standards for the people that we're dating. Follow the girl that sent me this story and add me on Instagram and DM me if you have a story of your own. Story time. Someone tried to murder me on a school trip. So during my senior year, I started talking to this guy that we can call Tyler. And we all had to go on a school trip for a competition. During this, we had to stay in a hotel room and we were all assigned partners. Well, I didn't know this at the time, but I was actually assigned Tyler's ex-girlfriend. We can call her Penny. And when I found out she was his ex, I was like, you know what? Not a big deal. I'm probably just overthinking it, but she had a reputation for being psychotic. And I mean, psychotic, psychotic. Since we were all in close quarters, it didn't take her long to figure out that I was talking to her ex. And she went crazy on me. She basically threatened me by saying that if she ever saw me with him again, I wouldn't be coming home to my family. I still honestly didn't take her that seriously until the next day she saw us kissing and she left the hotel room to buy throwing knives for when I got back. So when I reached the hotel room that day, she was yelling at me, threatening me, and then she took out one of the knives. Stay tuned for part two and follow me on Insta. Part two to me almost getting murdered on my school trip. So when Penny took out one of the knives, she literally threw it right at me. Somehow it only managed to land five inches from me and I was okay. So I took off running out of the hotel room. I immediately went to our director and literally because her parents fund most of the band stuff, he straight up couldn't care less. I told my mom who happened to work with the superintendent's wife. So she told her the whole story and gave my mom his phone number. Let's just say they were suspended and the teacher was fired. She swore up and down that her and Tyler were going to get back together, but it's been three years later and she's still crazy and he still hates her and I'm still with him. So I guess the moral of the story is please take it seriously if someone threatens you, especially if it's a crazy ex. Love you guys. Follow my Insta and DM me if you have your own story that you want to share. Story time, how I found out my substitute teacher was actually my biological father. So of course I went to school for our usual class and our teacher wasn't there. So we had a substitute that day and I could have sworn that I recognized him but I couldn't tell from where. There would be times during the lecture where I would look up and he would just be looking at me. I felt like there was a weird connection between the two of us but I didn't exactly know where to place it. Since it was the last hour of the day, he asked me to stay after class. I immediately got the creeps and said no, I had to catch my bus. And I hadn't seen him for weeks after that. Some days later, I noticed a for sale sign on my neighbor's yard. So during their open house, I decided to peek out my window and see who was visiting. And there he was, my substitute teacher. I got the creeps and I just ran upstairs to focus on something else. Once the house sold and the moving trucks came in, I saw that it was my substitute teacher that actually bought it. I was terrified but still felt this weird connection. That's when my mom offered for us to bring cookies over to his house. She said it was the neighborly thing to do, so that's what we did. So we went to go knock on his door. Stay tuned for part two and add me on Instagram. Okay, so part two to finding out my substitute teacher was actually my biological father. So the whole interaction between my mom and him was so odd. He was clearly high, so my mom just set the cookies down on his front door, and we just left. Many nights after that, I just felt like someone was always watching me. I constantly got the creeps, and I would just notice like little stuff going missing. But I never thought it was that big of a deal. But a few days later, this man invited us over for a dinner, and my mom made me go. And it was just as strange. Like, I could tell that my mom was so uncomfortable. I asked to be excused to go to the bathroom, and once he showed me where it was, I did a little bit of snooping. In a room close to his bathroom, there was pictures of us. Like my mom and I and baby pictures of me, and also recent pictures that we were completely unaware of. I ran downstairs and grabbed my mom and told her that we had to leave. She agreed and once I told her about the pictures, we filed a police report. The police told me he was my biological father and he was in the process of searching for me for three years. And to this day, my mom has still not talked to me about the situation. Sometimes you have to trust your gut. Add me on Instagram and if you have a story you'd like to share, DM me. 
So this is a story time about how I became best friends with the girl that my boyfriend cheated on me with. So when I met this guy, we'll call him Bronson, there was an immediate attraction. He was a Sagittarius, so he was super charming, life of the party, and it didn't take long for us to start talking. Well, it turned out he wasn't totally honest with me and he had a girlfriend. So I cut him off and didn't think twice about it. About a year later though, he came back into my life. He reached out after his breakup with his girlfriend and he asked if we could give things a real chance. Knowing the connection that we had, I said yes. And things were almost too perfect. We were taking cute photos for Instagram together. It didn't take long for him to move in. And we spent so much time together. He even talked about marriage with me in front of his mom. So it felt like things were going pretty smoothly. Until one night we were going to bed, his phone started blowing up. I grabbed it and it was a notification from a guy named Brad, which I thought was super weird. The texts were asking where he was and what he was doing. And eventually I just decided to pick up the phone and it was a girl on the other end. Stay tuned for part two and follow me on Insta. Hey guys, so here's part two to becoming friends with the girl that my boyfriend cheated on me with. So when there was a girl on the other end, I was like, uh, what is this? And why are you calling my boyfriend's phone? And she was confused. She was like, boyfriend? I thought you were just being his supportive friend. It turns out him and his ex were still seeing each other. I was pissed and woke him up. And he had the nerve to try to tell me that she was being the crazy one. Like, obviously you've been seeing both of us. We're not that stupid. And she even sent me the screenshots to prove it. And he still had the nerve to deny it. I kicked him out of my house and we didn't talk for a while until one day he managed to work his way back in. I, being stupid, forgave him and decided to try things again. It happens to the best of us. Things seemed okay again, but he told me during our time apart he was couch surfing and he didn't actually have a place to stay, like he was just homeless. So I offered to let him live with me again. That night that he moved back in, I received a call from his ex, we'll call her Ashley. And Ashley goes, um, no, he's been living with me this entire time. Stay tuned for the last part and follow me on Instagram. Hey guys, here's part three to becoming best friends with the girl that my boyfriend cheated on me with. So that's when it all clicked that this man just couldn't ever be honest with me at all from day one and that there was no way that he was ever gonna be honest with me again. So we might as well let things go down in flames. I told Ashley that she was welcome to come over. So she knocked on my door and I let her in while Bronson was still sleeping and she walked straight to the back and woke him up. They immediately started fighting and running around my house, yelling and arguing with each other. I was so done at that point that I just sat in my kitchen with my cup of coffee and just watched. I just couldn't believe that I let a man get the best of me like this. And the best of both of us. Both of us were 100% done. No more. And we decided to become each other's support system to avoid getting back together with him. Nothing brings two girls together like a hate for a man. Now, not only is she my good friend, but she is also my roommate. Sometimes toxic men can bring two people together. Follow me on Instagram for more content, and if you have a story, DM me. So this is about the time that I dated a sociopath. So I met this guy that we'll call Aaron at my best friend's birthday party. He was super attractive, but honestly, I was flirting with his friend the whole night, which looking back on it, I think is what got his attention. By the end of the night, he went out of his way to talk to me and I noticed just how absolutely charming he was. And I was shocked that he was single. So he asked for my number and I of course gave it to him. And for our first date, we ended up going hiking. PSA for your safety, I do not recommend this for a first date. While everything seemed fine originally, this is where the conversation got weird. He talked to me about how he was attracted to me because I was going going into the mental health field. He feels like no one can figure him out. He struggled with relationships for years because he continually puts on masks for people, but they can only last for so long before they come off and a breakup occurs and the other person sees his true self. But he says that this is why he's so good at sales. He's able to be whoever he wants to be for each person. He customizes it. Never once did he talk about his own emotions regarding situations, just his protection of his own reputation. As if he sees people as a way to get something or protect something. Soon I was contacted by a family member. Stay tuned for part two. Hey guys, so welcome to part two of me dating a sociopath. So his cousin reached out to say that this is what he does to girls. He stays in someone's life for a little bit, absolutely destroys it, and then pieces out. The person that he dated before me was a mom of two kids. He walked into her life, pretended to be a father figure, and then once he couldn't hold that mask for too long, he left. He only lasted like three months. Of course, me being absolutely stupid, I decided to continue dating this person. Part of it was because I was attracted to them, and another part was just pure fascination. He always told me what I wanted to hear. Looking back on it, I know that I was just another person that he customized whatever he had to say to, but not only did he win me over, he went out of his way to impress every single person in my life so that he would for sure have an end. And then on my birthday of last year, he called me to tell me he was too busy to date me. And I was beyond upset with myself for seeing so many red flags and still continuing. And that's when one of his best guy friends reached out to me, saying that he had been dating my best friend's little sister the entire time, talking to her and going on dates with her, having her over right after me, completely two timing. I cut him off and haven't heard from him in a year. Until last week. Stay tuned and follow me on Instagram. 
guess here's part three of me dating a sociopath with receipts. So I went out downtown with my boyfriend Jeremy and a few of our friends. Went to a few bars and a couple clubs and had a great time, came home, was getting ready for bed. And then I got a text on my Snapchat. Y'all know the feeling of seeing someone's name pop up on your phone that you haven't seen as a notification for over a year. It's weird. Essentially, he was apologizing about a year ago, saying that he feels like he hasn't wronged someone as much as he's wronged me, but that he saw me tonight and essentially followed me to each place that we went and talked to my friends about me and how beautiful I looked, even though he is still with my friend's little sister. We'll call her Ava. But do y'all see how creepy that is? Like, I never saw him. Like, I don't know what's wrong with my monitor, but then he called me. I'm pretty sure he thought that I wasn't going to be around my boyfriend anymore more that's why he waited but i put him on speaker so my boyfriend could listen to and he just went on and on and i knew i was gonna have to let his girlfriend know so i called my friend and let her know what happened she said she was gonna tell her sister tonight and that night she said ava and her wanted to do a group facetime this story basically turns into catch a cheater stay tuned and follow me on instagram for more content Okay, here's part four to dating a sociopath. So I got on the phone with my best friend and Ava, and Ava said, and I quote, that Aaron let her know about the phone call and the text messages, but said it was because my boyfriend and I were following him around the entire night. What? She already knew that it was sus, and she had been having a gut intuitive feeling that the relationship wasn't okay for the past few weeks. So me showing her the message kind of just confirmed her feelings, and she was going to confront him on it and give him a chance to explain himself. Well, this man decides to contact me again. I immediately text Ava and send her the messages, and he asked to call me a second time. This is when we decide to record the phone call. If you guys want, I can put in a few of the clips just so you can see how this man finesses and charms. But during this phone call, he essentially said that the text messages between me and him made him come to the conclusion that his relationship with Ava was not at its best and he was going to meet with her to break up with her, but that they were obviously still going to be friends. And he was only concerned about his reputation and his standing with their family. This makes me wonder what he's even saying to other girls since he's saying this with someone that's so close to them. Stay tuned for the update and add me on Instagram. So this really cute guy gave me his number at Target, and I'm really excited. I'm going to call him right now. I decided to record it because what if this is the love of my life or something? This is going to be played at her wedding. Like, you really never know. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Someone else, can I put you on hold for a minute or two? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thomas. Hey, Rosanna, can you get Hi, is there someone named Andrew that works there? Sorry, who? Andrew? No. Okay, have a nice day. You too. Are you fucking... Oh my... That night at like 2 a.m. I woke up to my chair falling in my room and I was really confused because Everyone was sleeping and no one was in my room. Long story short, I ended up falling asleep again, but then I got sleep paralysis. My eyes were stuck open. I could not move, but I was fully aware of what was happening, which was really weird. And then I remember hearing this like really heavy voice saying, rebuke me now, you really can't. Like I'm here, you can't tell me to go away anymore. I couldn't move, so my eyes were literally just staring at the wall. And then I remember seeing a shadow of a little kid playing with a board, but then randomly I just woke up again. By this point, it's like 3.45 AM. I remember that because I was really freaking scared. And I got up to go tell my parents. <laughs> this is the best pop. <laughs> So as I was walking into my parents' room to go tell them what happened, I remember I started feeling dizzy. Next thing I know, I wake up in an ambulance with doctors asking me if I'm okay because I fainted. Like, what the- this is so sus. Like, what the- years ago I went to a party with my brother so my brother and I walk into the house where the party is then the party host comes up to us and he's like hey guys go pick a cup and so we go pick a cup there was like a pink cup a red cup a gold cup I didn't think much of it so I just grabbed the pink cup I didn't really know that many people at the party so I just got my pink cup got some water went to go sit down in the living room it was alone it was dark I was like this is perfect I love being alone actually no I don't I just don't have friends but it's okay so as I'm just like sitting down in the darkness alone this random guy just comes and sits really close to me so then the guy randomly just like taps me on the shoulder he's like look at my pants and i was like oh nice jeans whatever and he's like no no look and so i look closely and you know his pickle down there is like sticking up like oh my god i was like dude no like no no and he's like but you got the pink cup and i was like yeah it's like the pink cup means you're down to smash whenever <laughs> like what you said what <laughs> 
got these shoes from Target and I got home and I started unboxing the shoes and inside the box there was a little note. On the note it said, today's your lucky day, come to this address to get your prize. So automatically I was like, oh my god, David Dobrik is gonna give me Tesla, you know what I mean? I showed my brother the address and the note and everything and we went. So we pull up and then we knock on the door and this old lady answers. She's like, what do you want? And then we give the note and we're like, we found this note and she's like, oh yeah, one second. And then she goes to get something. So the old lady comes back with like this stone and she gives it to me and she's like, here, keep this stone. It'll keep you safe from all the spirits. I was like, okay. So the night of, I was keeping the stone in my room, but I just could not sleep. I felt like someone was looking at me and I was really scared. Like I literally felt like someone was staring at me. I told my brother and we went back to try to give the stone back to the lady. She wasn't there, so we left it on her porch. Some way after we left this stone at this old lady's house, it gets mailed back to me and I never gave her my address. Today I'm going to practice driving so that I can go visit all of my boyfriends. Sam, you're going to hit the curve. Mom, no, Sam, no, no, you're no. going to hit the curve! I'm back from my driving lesson. Um, it was kind of scary. Um, I still can't drive, but don't come for me because I can drive in a straight line. Just like, I can't do lefts or rights, but I can drive in a straight line. I'm a hot dog, if you didn't notice. Let me tell you a story about something that just recently happened to me. <laughs> it made me cry. <laughs> so there was this guy that I really liked. And then we kissed and I was like, oh my gosh, like I think he likes me. So then the next time I saw him, I was going to ask him if he liked me back. I'm sure sure asked him if he liked anyone. I thought he was going to say me because we kissed. <laughs> he told me he doesn't like anyone. <laughs> I'm a clown. So I was playing with my little cousin and then I scared her for fun, like just playfully. And then I was like, rawr. And then she started crying and then she turns around and starts running and I see that her pants are full of <laughs> shit now. I'm going to practice for like when someone wants to fight me. Stop. Stop it. <laughs> Why did I laugh? Oh my god, I'm so ugly. <laughs> I'm so freaking woke. I don't sleep with my eyes closed. You know how I sleep? That's how I sleep. So. Stay woke. Stay woke. Stay woke. Stay woke. <laughs> One time I had to babysit one of my neighbor's kids overnight. We're gonna call the kid Benny. The parents didn't really tell me anything when they left me alone with Benny, but they left me a note and they were like, you can only open it in emergencies. So at this point, I'm alone with Benny. It's like 11 p.m. And I told Benny, I was like, dude, you should like get to bed, it's late. Then Benny starts getting really red and he's like, no, we don't wanna sleep alone, sleep with us, please. I didn't know why Benny said us, but I was like, whatever, okay, like, yeah, I'll sleep in your room, like, it's fine. So fast forward a couple hours, it's like 3 in the morning at this point. This is the best part. <laughs> Benny starts talking in his sleep, and he's like, take her instead. You are not my friend anymore. I am not yours. And I try waking him up, and I look at him, and his eyes are wide open as he says this stuff. I was freaking out, so I went to go open the note that his parents said was only for emergencies. It just gets better. <laughs> The note said, we're sorry for not telling you. Run him a cold bath. Call 911 in case anything happens. What the? After Benny was literally acting possessed while I was sleeping in his room, I went to go open the note that his parents left that was only for emergencies. And guess what it said? <laughs> the note literally said, sorry for not telling you. Run him a cold bath and call 911 if anything happens. <laughs> I didn't know what to do, so I just went to go wake up Benny. So when I woke Benny up, he was really, really mad, and he kept trying to put his hands in front of my eyes and was telling me, please be nice to them, open up. <laughs> and so long story short, I ran Benny cold bath, and then he locked himself in the bathroom. So at this point, Benny has literally locked himself in the bathroom, and he's literally yelling out loud, please take her, not me, I won't tell anyone. <laughs> this is the best part. <laughs> so I called the police because I was scared for my life at this point. And the note that his parents left said to do that. So the cops tried calling Benny's parents, but they couldn't get a hold of them. But they got a hold of the grandparents. And eventually his grandparents came. So his grandparents come and they're like, we're going to take him to a priest. And they told me to leave. Hey, I was thinking maybe one day we could like go on a date or something. Like, let me know if you're down. <coughs> oh my god. <laughs> I I had to take a taxi by myself. We're gonna call the driver a fucking Peppa. So whatever, the taxi picks me up, the driver's going good. Fast forward 10 minutes, Peppa's like, hey, I'm sorry, can I go pick up my friend really, really fast? 
And I was like, yeah, it's fine, whatever, like, it's fine. So we put up to Peppa's friend's house and this guy comes out. He gets in the car and right away, Peppa and her friend, so she calls it, start making out. The best part is coming. <laughs> so then Peppa gets a call and finally Peppa and her friend stop making out. She answers the call and she's like, hey honey, I'll be home in 10 minutes. So then she hangs up the call and she looks at me and she's like, hey, please don't tell anyone that I'm cheating on my boyfriend. Like this is just a one time thing. I was like, I'm gonna tell someone because that's not right. So then Peppa pulls out her phone and she starts laughing. She was like, this was for my YouTube, it was a prank, don't worry. I haven't found the video yet, so. I was in class on Zoom. I wanted to go to sleep, honestly, because like when I'm tired, I go to sleep. I end up falling asleep and then class ends and everyone starts leaving the class. Except me, because I was like in a whole other universe at this point. I was dreaming, I was flying. At this point, me and the teacher are alone in the call. This is the best part. <laughs> then the teacher starts talking to me and he's like, Samantha, wake up. Samantha, please. Samantha, you have another class. He woke me up, but I was half awake, so I didn't really know what was going on. So I thought it was my brother waking me up, and I straight up yelled. I was like, shut up, you fat booger. And so then I realized, oh shit, I just called my teacher a fat booger. And now he scheduled a parent conference. Um, I'm going on Monday, so I'm really excited. <laughs> One day, I told my mom that I was going to be joining a club after school. But in reality, I was gonna hang out with this guy that I liked after school. We're gonna call him Hunter. So at this time, there was a trend going around school where you yank people's hair for fun and you pull down people's shorts for fun. But long story short, I'm walking with Hunter and this group of girls walk up to me. This is the best part, oh my God, LOL, LOL. So these girls walk up to me and then they yank my shorts down. I was on my period when they decided to do this. So my whole ass passed flew out like if it was a piece of lasagna and so then hunter looks at the pad he's like why is it red oh i don't know hunter maybe i'm a ketchup bottle you should squeeze me now when i want to hang out or make friends and talk to people that haven't seen my whole ass pad i go on the app wink we love wink no one has seen my pad on wink we love One day, I went to my friend's birthday party. We're gonna call her Jazzy. So I'm at the party and then Jazzy's dad pulls me aside and he's like, can we talk in private? I was like, yeah, of course, because I thought it was gonna be like a gift for Jazzy. So long story short, he pulls me aside and it gets so motherfucking weird. Like, like homeboy starts holding my hand and he's like, I always thought you were one of Jazzy's most beautiful friends. Age is just a number. I don't really like my wife. And I was like, <laughs> that's disgusting. So I got to the point where I got really uncomfortable. I ran away and I went to go tell Jazzy's mom what her husband was telling me. So I go tell her, right? This is the best part. <laughs> So we go to tell Jazzy's mom and she's like, thank you for telling me, I'm gonna take care of it. Here's this water, drink it. Like you're probably so overwhelmed right now. So I remember I drank the water and I felt dizzy and tingly. Next thing I know, I'm in the hospital because Jazzy's mom put poison in my- After I told Jazzy's mom that her husband was trying to get at me, she gives me a cup of water and she's like, drink it, you're probably so stressed out. Long story short, she put poison in the water. I wake up in the hospital with my parents around me, investigators, all of that ish. They're asking me a lot of questions about Jazzy, about the party, what was going on, like what was her dad telling you? Long story short, this whole investigation is going on, on Jazzy's family and their background, their, all of that stuff. This is the best part! So the um, investigators, you know, they, they find out that Jazzy's mom has a background on hurting and poisoning a lot of girls that her husband looks at and talks to. Um, I don't really talk to Jazzy anymore. I don't really know what happened. Um, all I do know is that they took Jazzy's mom to like a psych ward. I was talking to this guy and we went on a date to Six Flags. So we're at Six Flags, everything is so fun, so quirky. And then we decided to get on Tatsu. So basically at Six Flags, Tatsu has like four seats every row. So you basically sit next to like a random stranger sometimes. So we get on and then the boy that I'm talking to was like, oh, I don't want to sit next to the stranger. You have to sit next to her, I'm scared. And I was like, okay, like whatever, it's fine. So we're on the ride, right? <laughs> this is the best part. Oh my god. <laughs> the girl next to me who is a stranger starts spitting on me. She's literally like scratching me and like punching me. And so the ride finishes and I was like, "What's your issue?" So then the girl points at the guy that I'm talking to and she's like, "That's my boyfriend. He's cheating on me right now." I was like, "What the fuck?" Homeboy told me he was single. There were no pictures. He didn't tell me anything. Like So then we left 
Sunday I was in my bathroom getting ready to film a story time. So then I go get the lip gloss that I usually use for all of my story times and I start doing the clown makeup that I do in every video. But long story short, the video's done. It's time to take off the clown makeup. This is the best part, oh my God. Bitch, <laughs> it did not come off. I tried every cleanser, every makeup remover, coconut oil, everything. So I'm sitting here looking like a whole ass raspberry and I was like, so what do I do now? Because I'm purple and it's just not good. Like, and then I found this amazing product, bitch. It removes blackheads, oil buildup, and absorbs most of the moisturizer. Tightens your pores, literally everything you could want, sis. And it all comes in just this. So it's basically like a three in one. So now I can do my clown makeup again without looking like a raspberry. So yeah, you already know I got you with that good skin. Link in bio. So in 8th grade, we had our final for PE. Basically, we had to run like 7 laps in 20 minutes, whatever. So long story short, everyone starts running, you know, moving their legs so fast. And then people start finishing. I was like, oh my god, ew. So at this point, it's like 45 minutes. The whole class is done, except me. And everyone's just watching me run. Like, we had this one kid named Pedro, who each time I did a lap, he'd be like, finally. Like, thank you, Pedro. Thank you. So then the teacher stops me and he's like, you're so slow. And then the teacher is like, you're not gonna graduate because you're so fucking slow. And I was like, oh. So then I go talk to the principal. Oh my God, this is the best part, oh my God. Principal tells me I'm not gonna graduate on stage <laughs> because I'm so slow. So graduation day comes and I snuck into the school and I got a fake gown and I made my mom take pictures of me. So it looked like I was graduating, you know, like. And then the principal sees me and he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm graduating, what about you, cutie? And he calls the cops on me because I'm an intruder. Like, what do you mean, silly goose? I was the one that couldn't run. About a week ago, I was walking in the street and this random guy came up to me. We're gonna call him Ramon. So Ramon comes up to me and he's like, come model with me. I'm having a photo shoot with Kendall Jenner tonight. Here's my business card. Here's the address. But you might say, oh my God, Samantha, that's so sus. Like S-U-S, bitch. I know, but I still went, okay? But long story short, I get to the address where Ramon told me to go. It was an apartment and I walk in, right? <laughs> this is the best part, oh my God. So I see Ramon and Ramon is wearing one leaf as his outfit for the photo shoot. And he's like, we have your leaf over there, go change. Do I look like a whole ass piece of wood to be a tree? Like so I was like, I'm not comfortable. I don't want to do this. So I try to walk out and then Ramon covers the door. And then Ramon's like, wait, no, Kendall Jenner is coming out in the bathroom right now. So I was like, okay, what if it is Kendall Jenner? So someone comes out of the bathroom. It's a whole ass crackhead wearing two leaves. He's like, I'm Kendall Jenner. I had a crush on my brother's best friend. We're gonna call him Pedro. One day, my brother and Pedro had a plan to go to the beach together, and then Pedro invited me. And I was like, let me check if I have something to do. Um, I don't, I'm going. I'm gonna go, Pedro, don't worry. But the night before, I was like, I need to look scandalous, like so scandalous. So I remember I wore this two-piece bathing suit. Okay, so long story short, the day came and we went to the beach. So we get to the water and immediately I go in. I wanted to show him, like, I'm a bra girl. Oh, this is the best part. <laughs> So I'm coming out of the water and I'm trying to look like a baddie. Like I'm trying to walk out all cute, like the hair is wet and everything. And I noticed Pedro was looking at my legs. So I was like, maybe he's trying to shoot his shot. So I went to go tell him something. And I was like, why do you keep looking at me? And he was like, look at your legs. I look at my legs. There's a whole ass piece of poop from the beach water. Okay, my parents and I stayed at an Airbnb in Vegas. I'm so short, I got sick, I got food poisoning, and my parents had to go get medicine at Rite Aid. So I was left alone at the Airbnb. So the house we were staying at had phones, so anyone could call the house number. And I remember laying in bed and someone called. I didn't answer, so obviously they had to leave a voicemail. But I remember the voicemail was like this robotic, edited voice, and it was like, the view is so great here, I'm behind you, blah blah. <laughs> Don't worry, it gets better. <laughs> so I was really scared, so I started yelling and I ran outside. I had food poisoning, so I was throwing up outside. And guess what, bitch? This cute guy was outside, so then he comes up to me and he's like, is everything okay? So I tell him what happened, so he's like, okay, I'll go inside the house with you. Let's see if someone's there. Oh, bitch, guess what? <laughs> we start seeing some flashing lights in the room that I was in. The owner was recording me at the airport. So after I ran outside and I find this cute random boy, he helps me and we go back into the Airbnb and we find the camera where the owner is literally recording me. So at this point, I remember the cute boy and I, we start taking pictures of the camera. 
and then we run out of the Airbnb and we call my parents and then my parents call the cops. So long story short, my parents get there and then guess who pulls up? The Airbnb owner. So I remember the Airbnb owner came out of his car and he had this like bottle of pepper spray and he was like, if you guys tell the cops, I'm gonna spray you guys. Like this is my property. I could do whatever I want. Like I could record you guys. So obviously my parents are mad, whatever. The police finally show up and I remember they took him, whatever, blah, blah. We showed them the pictures. Obviously we pressed charges. I mean, that's not okay. <laughs> I don't really know what happened, but what I do know is that they did an investigation on his Airbnb and they found a lot of cameras and footage that he had from previous people that stayed there. One time I was dating this guy. We're gonna call him Patrick. So one day on someone's Snapchat, I saw a binder that had pictures of Patrick in it. I, I freaked out, a bitch freaked out because I was like, I'm being cheated on right now. So what I did, I texted his mom because I was freaking out and I told her everything that happened. I was literally like sad and I was telling her how sad I was like, <laughs> and she was like, I'm gonna talk to Patrick. And I was like, okay. <laughs> So his mom gets back to me, right? And she texts me a picture. This is the best part. Oh my God. It's a picture of the binder that I saw on this person's Snapchat story. And I was like, yeah, that's the binder. Oh my. And she's like, oh, that's his binder. What are you talking about? It was super fucking embarrassing. Like, I swear I'm not a crazy bitch. Like, ugh. One day I was going through this celebrity's Instagram comments and one of the comments that I read was like DM me to enter this group chat it's top secret blah blah only accepting some I couldn't resist it so I DM'd him but day one comes in this top secret group chat and the people in the group chat are like yeah let's do like a video call whatever I was like down because like I don't have that many friends and like oh this is the best part <laughs> So I joined the video call and bitch, guess what? It was three old men and these old men were really confident in themselves. They were showing some things that I really did not want to see. So now when I want to make online friends, I go on the app Wink. I've met a lot of people there and I make a lot of best friends there. And I meet a lot of you guys there. I know I got you with those legit apps where you can make friends that aren't old men. <laughs> When I was like 15, I went to the mall to take a picture with Santa as a joke. Long story short, it was finally my time to take a picture with him. I walk up to Santa and the first thing he tells me, he's like, you're so beautiful. Like you've been a good girl, haven't you? So eventually the time was done, the pictures were taken, whatever. I turn to say bye to Santa and he starts leaning in for a kiss. At this point, I was annoyed, uncomfortable. I, so I took off his like glasses and like his beard because you know how Santa wears that like, oh, this is the best part, okay? <laughs> I look at him and the guy under the Santa suit was my friend's boyfriend. So when I was really young, I used to have a crush on this boy. We're gonna call him motherfucking Zane, okay? So you know, I was texting Zane on kick, whatever. And out of nowhere, Zane sends me a picture. The picture was of him holding his, um, his, you know, his bajunk junk down there. So I was scared. I mean, like, I didn't know what the fuck this was. I was so young. I was like, dad, what is this? And he got pissed, bitch. Long story short, we were at the store one day. <laughs> this is the best part, okay? <laughs> My dad and I were at Toys R Us. And guess who we saw at Toys R Us, bitch? <laughs> we saw Zayn. So Zayn walks up to me. He's like, hi, Sam. And I remember my dad was like, oh, you're the boy that sent her that picture, huh? Like in elementary, I was bullied a lot. One day, this girl, we call her Jenny. Jenny was having a birthday party. So obviously I wasn't invited, so I basically begged for an invitation. And I remember Jenny was like, okay, if you're like my servant for like a week, like I'll give you an invitation. Long story short, I was a servant for a week and she gave me an invitation to her party. This is the best part, it's the best part. <laughs> so finally, party day came. My mom was driving me to the party. We were going to the address that the girl gave me. So we finally get to the house. The house was looking dead, like it didn't have balloons, nothing. So I was like, maybe, maybe they're just not done decorating. So I go and knock the door. And you know who answers the door? You're never gonna guess who. You're my fucking teacher. It was my teacher's house. Jenny gave me the address of my teacher, not her fucking birthday party. I just wanted to- One day in elementary school, it was lunchtime. A bitch had to go potty. It was poo-poo time. So I remember I went to the restroom and I was exploding or whatever. And these girls walked in. We're gonna call them the Chipettes, okay? <laughs> 
this is the best part. <laughs> oh, the chipettes start yelling in the bathroom. Is someone here? Can someone hear me? Like, I didn't say anything. I was literally taking a shit. Like, what? These girls, deadass, start laughing. They turn off the lights in the bathroom. They turn on all the sinks, whatever. And they start saying like Bloody Mary or some shit. And then the chipettes run out of the bathroom and shut the door. So here I am getting casted on. I remember seeing a shadow. I, I fell on my ass and I start screaming and crying. It wasn't good. So someone called the janitor. Janitor walks in to check up on me. It's a guy. Day, my brother and I were walking to a liquor to get there we had to go through an alley so we're walking through the alley and then randomly someone throws a rock at us but like obviously we turned around like bitch <laughs> literally no fucking cap we turn around and we see a clown looking at us with a hammer in his hand I thought it was my mom pranking me so I remember I looked at the clown and I was like you're so funny take off the mask my brother was like Sam what the fuck stop like actually this is a real clown I remember I looked at the clown and then the clown's like you have five seconds to run don't even try yelling no one's gonna hear you oh bitch we flew <laughs> this is the best part. So my brother and I, we start sprinting because we want to get somewhere where people are. And the clown starts chasing us. So I remember the clown chased us into this like vacant house. My brother and I didn't know what to do. So we go into the house and then we start hiding whatever. Tried calling the cops, no fucking reception. And guess whose house it was? Guess who met up at this house? One day I was in math class and my crush was sitting next to me. We're gonna call him Diego. So Diego and I were like teasing each other, we're like flirting, whatever. So fast forward 10 minutes, Diego asks the teacher, can I go to the bathroom? And then Diego looks at me and he's like, I'll see you soon. And I was like, silly goose, what? <laughs> what? So Diego goes to the bathroom. Then I get a FaceTime call. <laughs> oh, this is the best pop. <laughs> so I answered because I was like, okay, maybe something happened. Oh, something did happen, okay? So I answer and the first thing I see is he's putting his camera on his, um, you know, his bacon down there. And you know what the best part is? So right when I answer, obviously I was scared and I was like, oh. <gasps> And then my teacher was like, what happened? She grabs my phone and looks and she's like, why is it so small? Well, one day this random guy added me on Snapchat. I added him just because, just because. You really never know. It could be my soulmate or something. Like, we're gonna call him motherfucking Larry. So right when I added Larry, he sent me a snap. Oh, this? This is the best part. Just wait, sweetie. So it was a photo of a wall with pictures of me, baby pictures of me, even a picture of my cat with like tiny post-its all around it. And in the caption, he was like, I manifested you. You cannot leave anymore. I was kind of scared. So I, um, you know, I blocked him. And I remember I left my grandma's house because I was just really scared to even be in my own house. And so the next morning of me staying at my grandma's house, we got mailed this like big box with like confetti in it. And there was this envelope and I remember the envelope was like, hey, it's Larry. I told you you cannot leave. And my family's number was there, our address was there, and a bottle of pepper spray. This is why you shouldn't let just anybody around your kids. Wear a mask while you watch this story time. I promise you're gonna want to. So when I was around 15 years old, I started doing really, really bad in school. My parents were really, really poor. My dream was to go to college, so I needed to work my ass off so I could get a scholarship. But with how my grades were looking, it did not seem like I was gonna get one. My school offered after school tutoring classes, so I started taking them. But just in case I didn't get that scholarship, my parents started working late hours so they could pay for my college. They also hired a part-time babysitter slash housekeeper. Mind you, my parents worked all day until super, super late at night. Our job was to arrive after we all left to clean up the messes that we didn't have time to clean up in the morning or the night before. Then she was supposed to pick me up from my tutoring classes, stay at the house and watch me until my bedtime which was about 9 p.m. Then she was supposed to leave. But one day we were sitting at the kitchen table eating breakfast and we all catch a drift of this terrible smell. My dad finds out that the smell is coming from the basement. As soon as he opened the door the smell just hits you in the face. We all go down there to check where the smell's coming from. We see a pile of human feces. Laying next to it is my babysitter. So we go to check out the smell in the basement. And there my babysitter is, laying next to a pile of her own shit. My parents wake her up and everyone's covering their mouth and nose with our shirt. I'll, I'll go upstairs because the smell. I let my parents deal with that shit. <laughs> Literally. I hear my dad yelling at her and telling her to get out. She explains that she used to be a full-time nanny and she has nowhere else to go because they kicked her out. Um, if she was shitting on the floor, who the fuck wouldn't kick her out? She says she did that because she gets really bad anxiety at night and can't go upstairs or we would hear her and wake up. 
Just because you have anxiety does not give you the right to shit on the floor. I have anxiety. Do you see me shitting on the floor? So my parents kick her out anyways like any reasonable person would. And we thought that was the last that we were gonna see of her. But one night at like 2 a.m. in the morning, I hear a tapping on my window. So I wake up and there's my babysitter staring at me through my window. She looks sad and she like motions for me to let her in. I'm looking at her like, the fuck no? And so that sadness quickly turns to anger and she starts banging on my window. Like I said, there my stalker ass babysitter is banging on my window at 2 a.m. in the morning. And so I quickly go to get my parents because what if she breaks that shit and breaks in? Once I leave my room, I hear the banging stop, but I still go to tell my parents what just happened. My dad calls the police, and they check around the area, and she's nowhere to be found. The smell goes away, we don't see her anymore, so we think everything's good now. But one day, my mom texts me and tells me that she left me a tray of cookies on the dining table for when I get back from tutoring. Well, I didn't see any cookies or a tray. When my mom gets home, she wakes me up and asks me where I put the tray. I told her that I didn't even see the tray of cookies. So my mom tries looking for the tray because she needs it for when she cooks. She never finds it. Mind you, my family, like, never goes to our basement. But one day my dad needs some tools to help fix his buddy's car he also notices that the tray we were looking for is in the basement we're all freaked out at this point because our babysitter was secretly living in our house now things are going missing and being misplaced and after looking around for any suspicion that she might have been there again we notice a broken lock in the window of our basement so after putting two and two together and realizing that my babysitter had been sneaking into our house through our basement window and also noticing that things have been going missing we call the police and report her because it was just so obviously her she did not do a good job at all at covering her tracks. When the police look her up, they say she has no criminal record and that she's not enlisted in any housing. So she was homeless. So my parents go ahead and fix the lock on our basement window. I'm guessing once she found out that she couldn't get in anymore, she stopped trying. So afterwards, my parents stopped working as much and I got a friend to start dropping me off at home after my tutoring classes. Once I would get home, I would do all the cleaning just to help my parents out so then they could keep working their long hours so I could go to college. My parents were kind of iffy about leaving me at home by myself. Child, I could fight. So everything was good and we never saw her again. So today's story time topic is cheating. Now, cheating is an evil thing, all right? If you're gonna date somebody, just be loyal. It's not that hard. And if you don't wanna date them, don't date them. It's that simple. But sadly, some people in this world are indecisive as hell and they cheat on people and it's not a good thing. I'm sure most of you guys are very loyal people, so I'm not really speaking about you, but some people in this world that I've met aren't so loyal. And yeah, today's story time is about one of those people. So yeah, let's jump into it. So this story time takes place in 2016, okay? Now 2016, pretty good year, you know? Some crazy things happened that year, but for the most part, it was an awesome year. I don't have many complaints. But, uh, I have a friend, okay? Let's just call this friend Jonathan. Now, Jonathan had been dating this girl since 2014, and he was, like, totally in love with her. They were, like, high school sweethearts. Like, loved this girl. She seemed to have loved him. They seemed like they were in a very happy relationship. And, yeah, I was happy for both of them. They were both friends of mine. And, honestly, I never saw anything bad happening to, uh, their relationship at all. And, yeah, one day, Jonathan comes up to me in 2016. We're at a party. And he goes, yo, let's do, like, a road trip. Me, you my girl uh, our other friend his girl like that's all go as a group and camp out together now look your boy luna i'm not much of a camper okay i'm not really good at outdoors okay like i'll trip over a stick and crack my head open i'm not very outdoorsy as a matter of fact one of the last times i went camping i was running in the middle of the night and i tripped over a fire pit or something in the middle of the woods and i did a front flip and my flip flops went flying up into the sky and i cut open both of my knees so yeah the outdoors versus luna luna always loses but you know what i was like yeah man i'll go with you like that sounds fun so we got all our friends together we talked about it we all agreed to go and we planned a date so a month later that date finally came along we all got into my friend's big ass minivan and we all drove down to this campsite like an hour away we set up camp we were actually using an rv which was like pretty nice you know it's not really like tent camping it was really really nice and the first two days of camping awesome like no complaints i had nothing happening that was bad whatsoever but then day three came along and something really bad happened so it all starts off as a normal day i wake up all my friends wake up we leave the camper and i remember on this day we woke up super early like extremely early the sun was just starting to rise so we all went outside and we sat and just watched the sun rise it was beautiful right i was really looking forward to having an awesome day nope that wasn't the case so fast forward a couple hours later after the sun rises we're making breakfast and my friends decide they want to go on a hike now me i wasn't really feeling it i was still pretty tired because i woke up so early so i was like nah i think i'm just gonna hang back in the camper like you guys can go without me and my friend's girlfriend was saying the same thing she's like yeah i'm tired i'm gonna hang back here with austin now this is the girlfriend i was talking about where my friend had been dating her since 2014 they were high school sweethearts like very loyal to each other at least i thought they were and yeah they all leave and it's just me and my friend's girl just sitting in this camper and we're just sitting in this camper listening to music talking we get on the topic of her boyfriend and i was like yeah like he loves you like i'm so glad to see you guys still together after all these years 
And she's like, yeah, sadly, we're not doing very well. And I was like, really? And in my mind, this caught me so off guard. Like, they always were just, like, so all over each other, basically. I never saw them fight once. So it shocked me to hear her say that they weren't seeing eye to eye. So I asked her about it. I was like, oh, like, how long has this been happening? She was like, I'd say the last three months. Like, I think we're kind of working on separating. And I was like, working on separating? Like, what does that mean? And she goes, I just think I'm gonna have to break up with him soon. Like, he's just, he's such a sweet guy, but he's too nice. And I'm like, too nice? What, what does that mean? And she was like, I don't know. Like, he's just a pushover and he doesn't really care about me as much as he used to. And I don't know. Like, I don't really want to talk about this right now. And I was like, okay, fair enough. Like, it's none of my business anyway. She goes, thanks, Austin. Like, I knew you'd understand. And I was like, yeah, no, no problem. And all of a sudden, she like hugs me, like real tight. And I was like, okay, like maybe she's sad about her and her boyfriend not doing well. Like, I'll give her a hug. And I give her a hug. And then we start to pull away and she looks at me in my eyes and starts leaning in, like for a kiss. And I back up and I'm like, whoa, like, wh what are you doing? And she was like, oh, Oh, I'm sorry, like, I thought you wanted to. I was like, no, I, I don't want to do that. Like, you're dating one of my best friends. Uh, you shouldn't want to do that either because you're still dating him. And she was like, Austin, like, I just told you. We're going to break up soon. Like, come on. I was like, how about you break up with him and then you go kiss other people? Not me. I don't want to kiss you. Sorry. Like, nothing against you. Just, I'm not a dickhead. I'm not going to backstab my best friend. And she goes, whatever. And she gets mad at me and gets up and leaves the camper and walks outside. And at this point, I'm thinking I'm having a fever dream. I'm like, did that just happen? Like, a am I dreaming? Like, what's going on? So, like, 30 minutes later, my friends get back to the camper, and I knew what I had to do. Like, I had to tell him what just happened. I'm not about to not tell my friend that his girl just tried to kiss me, one of his best friends. So, as soon as they get back, I pull my friend aside. I'm like, yo, can I talk to you over here? He's like, yeah, what's up, man? What's going on? I'm like, bro, you left me alone with your girl, and she tried to make a move. He's like, what? Are you joking? And he starts laughing. He thinks I'm kidding. I was like, dude, no. Like, she literally tried to kiss me, and it was right after she said that you guys were having relationship troubles or something like that. And he's like, bro, you, you gotta be kidding right now. Like, are you fucking joking? I was like, dude, I'm not joking. Like, she literally tried to kiss me. And he starts getting mad at me. He's like, dude, don't fuck with me right now. Like, if you're fucking with me, I'm gonna be pissed. I'm like, homie, I'm not fucking with you. Like, your girl tried to kiss me. And he goes, all right, let's bring her over then. So he calls her over. And I just know it's about to be the most awkward thing ever. And she walks over and she's like, hey, what's up, baby? And she has like this fake smile on and everything. And he goes, did you just try to kiss Austin earlier? And she goes, what? No. Austin, what are you saying? And I'm like, oh, no, absolutely not. You are not about to lie on me like this. Like, you definitely tried to kiss me and you're just lying right now. You literally told me you guys were about to break up and then you went to kiss me. And she goes, Austin, I don't know what you're thinking, but like, you're so wrong about this. I literally gave you a hug. That was it. And I was like, actually, no you little liar you tried to kiss me and when i pulled away and said no you were like austin we're gonna break up anyway like come on don't backstab my friend like this and my friend poor little jonathan didn't know who to believe he keeps looking back and forth at me and her and he's got his hands on his head and like you could just tell he was stressed out and finally he comes to a conclusion of who to believe he goes listen like austin you've been my best friend for years like you know like we're day ones and uh i gotta believe you on this and that shocked me i did not think he was gonna believe me i was like oh thank fuck and he goes yeah so uh pack your shit get out of here and she goes what he goes, you can take my car back to my house get your car and then leave and she goes you're really gonna believe him over me your girlfriend and he goes yeah i am why would austin lie about that which is true like he has a point why would i make that up for no reason and yeah she just completely breaks character she goes all right fine i did try and kiss him because you fucking suck and she starts yelling at my friend telling him he's a shitty boyfriend and they started to argue and i immediately broke them up from arguing i got in between them and i was like look listen you guys are broken up now like stop fucking arguing you go back home go kiss whoever you want now and i don't have to cheat anymore have a good life and you Jonathan like go back to the RV like chill with our friends for a bit try and calm down I'll be in in a second and she goes whatever fuck you and she walks away grabs her stuff that she needs and then goes to Jonathan's car and takes off driving and yeah he was being nice like the fact that he let her take his car back to his house to get her car like he didn't even need to do that like if I just found out that somebody was trying to cheat on me or they did cheat on me I would not let them take my car back to get their car like I just be like all right walk home so yeah after this Jonathan just went back to being single he was pretty sad for quite a few months about about, you know, his girl being a cheater, basically. And he wasn't happy about that. But over time, he got better, and he found someone else that was way better for him, and they're still together to this day. So yeah, moral of the story is, be loyal, and if someone's not loyal to you, then they weren't the one to begin with. So yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed the story time and found it to be interesting. If you did, please leave a like on the video. I'd really appreciate it. Feel free to leave your story times in the comments down below, and subscribe if you're new. See y'all later. Peace. Today's story time, in my opinion, is a pretty crazy one. I'm gonna start this off by saying, uh, don't go to school and fight. 
I'm gonna get the moral of the story out of the way first. Moral of the story is, don't be like this girl that I'm about to talk about in this story time. Definitely not a good idea. But yeah, today's story time topic is uh, high school and a fight that I witnessed that was not like any other fight. It was an insane one, and specifically it involved two girls, but not just two ordinary girls, a girl and a teacher. Yeah, let's just jump into this. So this story time takes place in ninth grade. Yeah, ninth grade, it all starts off as a normal morning. I'm sitting in class, first period, just doing my work. And you know, like any other school day, I was tired as hell in the morning, just very low energy. Energy, wanting the day to go by faster and on this day we had a substitute teacher okay and she was a girl but the thing about this substitute teacher is I could tell immediately that she took no shit like a lot of the time when a class gets a substitute teacher they kind of just like dick around in class and not take it seriously because they think that they can't get in trouble this lady was a different type of substitute like I could just tell she took no bullshit like if anyone messed around with her she would not hesitate to throw their ass in detention so I just kept my mouth shut because I was kind of on thin ice at this point it was my first year of high school and I got into a little bit too much trouble than I would have liked to that year. So yeah, I wasn't trying to get in any more trouble because if I did, I might get moved to another school. So yeah, I was just trying to be good that class and, you know, not get in any trouble. And then this one girl walks in late to class. She was 20 minutes late. She walks in. Let's just call this girl Victoria, okay? Victoria had an attitude on her every single day, whether it was a substitute or a regular teacher. She was always mad mean to them. She was kind of mean to everybody. I remember one time I tried to borrow a pencil from her and I was like, hey, can I borrow a pencil? And she turns around, gives me an absolute death stare and then just laughs in my face and turns back around like what kind of evil shit is that it's like she's a marvel super villain so anyway she comes into class really late and the substitute goes who are you? She goes, my name's Victoria. She goes, well, you're late, Victoria. And Victoria goes, I don't care. And Victoria just sits down at her desk and pulls out a bagel from her backpack wrapped in foil and starts eating it. And I'm thinking to myself, like, where the hell did she just get a bagel from? Like, she really just spawned a bagel. Anyway, the substitute teacher walks over to Vic and goes, what'd you just say to me? And Victoria goes, I don't care that I'm late. Now get the fuck out of my face. And the substitute goes, what'd you just say? And she goes, you heard me. I'm not repeating myself. And the substitute was not having it. She literally pulls a chair up right next to her, sits down, and looks her right in the eyes, probably like an inch away, face to face, and goes, how about I give you detention? Then we can spend some more time together eating lunch. And Victoria goes, well, if you give me detention, I'm not fucking going. And the teacher goes, yeah, you are. And they just start getting up at each other's faces and like yelling at each other. And then Victoria says, listen, you got two seconds to take two steps back. And if you don't, I'm swinging on you. And I'm thinking to myself, like, yo, is this really happening? Like, are they about to fight? This can't be happening. Like, no, like this cannot happen. Like it's seven in the morning. It's way too early to be throwing hands at this hour. Like way too early, especially for teachers like let the poor lady have her coffee first before you start throwing hands come on i'm just kidding not a good idea to throw hands with a teacher ever anyway teacher doesn't back up she gets closer to the point where they're literally touching faces and victoria just straight swings on her and hits her in the face i'm really tired but not nah, for real it was way too early to be fighting so anyway they get broken up they're screaming at each other they're cussing at each other and one of the principals walks in the vice principal and she's like what's going on and i'm like uh th there was a fight and she goes with who like it wasn't obvious both my substitute teacher and victoria Victoria had the most messed up hair ever, but I point to both of them and I'm like, yeah, it was Victoria and the substitute And my vice principal goes the substitute fought. I was like, yep, she did and she goes really I was like, yep I'm just as shocked as you are. And she goes, okay, we'll get back to work I sit back down and I go back to doing my work Just you know minding my own business, you know being unproblematic and the vice principal brings the substitute teacher and Victoria up to her office So they can go talk about what just happened and she leaves us with the security guard in the room Just to monitor the class for the rest of class and yeah since he wasn't a teacher He's like, yeah, uh, just stay quiet go on your phones or something listen to music like you only have a little bit of class left so you know just relax for the rest of it and yeah so everything after that was a pretty normal day but i find out the next day that victoria got two weeks of suspension and the substitute could never work at our school again i don't know if she wasn't allowed to work at other schools as well but i full story on my youtube channel link in bio and in my head, I'm like, yo, this cannot be happening right now. And everybody jumps up out of their chairs and runs up to the front of the room to watch what's happening. And yeah, a full-blown fight breaks out between Victoria and our substitute teacher. And I'm just in shock. I'm like, this is not okay at all. And immediately, as soon as the fight breaks out, everyone starts making a bunch of noise and like screaming and yelling. And one of the security guards in the hallway heard this. And we had our door open so he could see in the classroom. So he runs in immediately and starts breaking up the fight. But the problem was, is it was one security guard and two girls fighting. So it took him a lot of force to break them up it took him probably a good 30 seconds to get them separated so that entire time they were basically fighting like with him in between them it was just the most like insane situation so anyway the security guard breaks them up but it doesn't end there the whole time they're broken up they're cussing and screaming at each other from across the room and i'm just thinking to myself like yo how is this happening right now at seven o'clock in the morning like how are these people not tired like if someone tried to walk up on me at seven in the morning and try to start a fight i'd be like hey man like can we get a rain check on this can we do this later today like this is why boys should cut all connections with their ex when they get a new girl. 
please make sure to watch all parts of the story because it all comes together in the end. Let's get into it. Junior year of high school, I started dating this boy whose ex was known to be crazy. She was so crazy that when me and him first started dating, she told everyone that he had taken advantage of her and got her pregnant so I could break up with him and no other girl would ever want to date him. Nobody believed her because she was a compulsive liar and she lied about serious things like that all of the time. And it was proven completely false when months later, she had no baby bump. I took it upon myself to start talking shit about her on my Instagram, as I should. But when she found out that I was talking shit about her, she wanted to fight. I don't fight over boys, so I told her to get over herself. Fast forward a week or two, I'm sitting in my living room and I hear the doorbell ring. I go to open it, but my mom's already at the door. She opens the door. Next thing you know, I see my mom get snatched. So I'm thinking, damn, it must be windy as hell outside. So I go to check to see what happened. And when I get outside, I see my mama getting whooped by three grown men. My boyfriend's ex was standing there and laughing. So like I said, I see my mama getting whooped by three grown men. And there my boyfriend's ex is standing there watching the whole thing and laughing. Once the men see me, they stop and I run to make sure that my mom is okay. And they start cussing saying this, that, and the third. And I'm telling all of them to go to hell. I'm trying to rush my mom back inside. There was seriously something wrong with her. Her nose was bleeding. She couldn't answer my questions. She was pretty fucked up. And my boyfriend's ex starts yelling and says, this is what you get for getting me a miscarriage. Now this girl was delusional. Cause I did nothing of the sort. Never put a hand on her. This is the first time I would be seeing her in person. I don't even know how she got my address. I don't bother arguing and I get my mom back inside. I hand her a phone and I tell her to call the police. But I also make sure to tell her to make sure to tell the dispatcher that we're going to need an ambulance. So then I go to my garage. I grab a bat, walk right back outside that door, and I go sicko mode. And this is when it gets crazy. Like I said, my boyfriend's ex had brought three grown men to my house and they all jumped my mother. So I grab a fucking bat and I go outside. Now I'm swinging on everybody. I'm talking bopping the head, bopping the nose, bopping your mouth. I'm not giving them the chance. I don't even care if the police come in. Let them arrest me. I do manage to get all three grown men on the ground. With my bat, of course. Then the only people left standing is me and my boyfriend's ex. I'm like a bull looking at her ready to charge. <laughs> But now I was ready to mollow up that bitch. She starts running. I run right after her. I am on her ass like wet grass. She tries to get in what I'm assuming was her car or one of the grown men's car. I drag her out that car and I start beating her with my bat. The grown men are off the ground at this point and start running towards me. So then they get close. When I tell y'all I start swinging that bat, I don't even know who I'm hitting. I did end up accidentally breaking their windshield. And then the police show up. So I'm beating up those three grown men and my boyfriend's ex with my bat. I accidentally break their windshield and I don't feel bad about it. And that's when the police show up. No one was recording the incident, so when the police got there, those three grown men and my boyfriend's ex tried to lie and say that they were the ones who got attacked. But little did they know, we had cameras all around our house and it recorded the whole incident. I tell the police I was beating them for self-defense and that my mom was inside and she was already injured. Later on, we were able to file assault and trespassing charges. But anyways, I ride with my mom in the ambulance. Then I go to text my boyfriend to tell him what happened. I forgot to mention earlier on, I had told my boyfriend multiple times to completely block his ex on all social medias. But he didn't, so she would constantly like all of his photos, constantly DM him, and he told me that he would just ignore her. And so I don't just text him what had happened. I also make sure to break up with him because if he had blocked her on all socials and cut contact with her then his ex would have never known that we were dating and my mom wouldn't be completely paralyzed on the right side of her face this is the time i found out my mom was cheating on my dad with my ex-boyfriend up uh, with my ex-boyfriend and you already know your girl came with a receipt let's get into it so around january last year me and my boyfriend of one year had just broken up and around that same time i noticed that my parents relationship was going down the drain too i'm an only child i could see how fake my parents would be around each other it's honestly like they didn't even try to hide it so one night i asked to use my mom's phone because i needed to look something up in that very moment and my phone was dead and obviously i don't just look for what i need i invade her privacy because if she had free access to my phone she would have done the same thing so i'm scrolling through her phone then i open iMessage first thing i see is a conversation with my ex-boyfriend i wasn't surprised that she had his number because i gave it to both of my parents while we were dating just in case of emergency so I click on their conversation and this is what I see child at the time I wasn't paying attention to the date I just assumed that they were old messages from when he would be coming over to see me but later on when I caught them together I threatened to expose him unless he sent me all their messages which will be posted on my Instagram story and I found out that those messages were from the day before I caught them together which happened the next day receipts included so like i said i saw these messages on my mom's phone between her and my ex-boyfriend here they are again i wasn't paying attention to the date so i thought they were old until the next day so i'm with my friend and i'm in the passenger seat of her car i open snapchat and i accidentally click on snap maps and i see something weird it says my ex is at my house i'm thinking it has to be a glitch because why the fuck is this man at my house we were somewhat close to my house so i asked if we could pass my house real fast just to see if he was actually there we drive past and we see his car in the driveway and then we see him get out of his car I'm trying to see what the fuck is up because after those text messages I saw, I don't trust. I'm on they ass like back pockets. I tell my friend, park behind this big ass tree, girl. We've been watch. So he walks up to the front door. And before he even knocks, before he even rings the doorbell, 
My mom opens the door, smiling all big and shit. Then she opens her arms and hugs him. So she was expecting his arrival. But that was just a little friendly hug, right? You know, nothing too crazy. And they both proceed. This was a team effort to kiss. I pass out. Receipts included. After I see on Snap Maps that he's at my house, me and my friend drive past my house to see if he was actually there and his car was in the driveway. My mama opens the door for him before he even knocks. Then me and my friend witness them lock lips. At this point, my blood is cold. The way I hop out that car faster than you could say home wrecker. So there I am running towards them. Obviously, they see me running towards them. Eyes wide open and they start looking at each other. I'm like, hey, uh-uh, don't look at each other. Look at me. Look over here. What y'all staring at each other for? So I ask them if I just saw what I just saw. Obviously, they try to gaslight me. My friend was there and she saw it. So ain't no fooling me. So I'm screaming at them and I'm going at it. And they're screaming back like they didn't just do what they did. Our neighbor who is a cop hears us arguing and comes outside and tries to defuse the situation. He asks us what's going on. I just tell him that everything's fine and then we go inside. So we go inside and I sit them both down. I'm more curious as to how they even formed this whole entire relationship. So I tell my ex that I won't expose him if he sends me all the messages between him and my mother. So once I caught them, I told my ex-boyfriend that I wouldn't say anything to anyone if he sent me all the messages between him and my mother. There my mom was still trying to lie about it, still trying to deny it, like me and my friend did not just see them both trade spit. He ends up agreeing and there my mom is just looking dumb. And she says, if he sends you these messages, you're not allowed to tell your dad. I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. Obviously, I was still going to tell my dad. All of those messages are posted on my Instagram story. So I did end up telling my dad and he divorced my mom. I was surprised it was going to happen anyways. Their relationship was going down the drain. We both move out and then I stay with my dad until I go to college and get my own dorm. I still talk to my mom every now and then because she was never a bad mom. Never understood and will never understand where this whole thing came from. Just that one incident was traumatizing and uncalled for. Our relationship after that was never the same. It was just always awkward. Last thing I heard about my ex was that he moved to states. Story time about how I broke up my best friend and his girlfriend. So it was our sophomore year in high school, and my best friend and I had known each other since we were like eight years old. And I've always had a crush on him. Like anytime he would get a girlfriend, I would try and break them up. And it would work. Well, our freshman year of high school, he started dating this one girl. Well, when he started dating her, he distanced himself from me because she didn't like how much time we were spending together. So a few months go by and my birthday's coming up. And mind you, within these past few months, we only seen each other like twice. And he had me blocked on all social media. Well, our parents were really good friends because we lived in the same cul-de-sac. So my mom invited him and his parents to my birthday party. So at the end of my party, my friends left and him and his parents stayed. And my parents really didn't care if I drank alcohol, so we had like a whole bottle of vodka to ourselves. So we're in the basement and we're taking shots together. Well, I got him super drunk and he fell asleep. And while he was sleeping, I went on his phone and, and I was able to get into his phone because he sold my fingerprint from when we were best friends. So I unblocked myself on all social medias and there was an ottoman pushed against the couch. So while he was sleeping, I was able to go lay next to him. So while I was laying next to him, I took a few pictures of us and I saved them in his camera roll. And I also sent one to his girlfriend and it was about one in the morning. Well, she opened it right away and then she started going off and would not stop calling his phone. So after that, I turned his phone off. So he started to wake up and then we started drinking more and then we started fooling around. And while we were doing the nasty, I took a video, but he didn't see it because the phone was in front of me and I had his girlfriend on Snapchat. So what did I do? I sent the motherfucking video to her. So the next day, obviously, he found out what happened. So then he came over to my house to talk to me, and I told him how I was upset that she was keeping him from me. So he broke up with her and started dating me. If you guys want to talk about the worst mom in the history of moms, let's talk about the case of Diane Downs who literally attempted to murder all three of her children in order to get a man to fall in love with her. So what exactly creates a monster like this? Well, Diane was born August 7th of 1955 in Phoenix, Arizona. Most of her life, she was pretty well behaved, but she started to rebel against her parents around high school. She cut her hair, had a really edgy phase, and got super boy crazy. And she started to date guys, which was way outside of her strict family's rules. And she fell in love with a boy named Steve Downs. They were high school sweethearts, but the second that college hit, they ended up going separate ways. He joined the Navy, and she went to Pacific Coast Baptist Bible College. And while they said that they would stay faithful to each other, she immediately started to hook up with other guys when she got there. And was expelled for her promiscuous behavior, and had to go back and live with her strict parents. While Steve came back, he forgave her, and they ended up running away together and getting married on November 13th of 1973. They were known to fight constantly. But in 1974, they had their first child together, making everything worse. Well, the marriage between her and Steve was beyond rocky. And having their first daughter together, Christy, did not help that improve. 
And six months after she was born, Diane ended up leaving Christy with her dad so she could join the Navy, which only lasted three weeks because she had to leave for severe blisters. They had another kid in 1976 named Cheryl, and Steve had a vasectomy immediately after this, but then Diane was pregnant again. So I guess you can imagine how that happened. She did not go through with the pregnancy, but her and Steve stayed together. Later, they moved to Mesa, Arizona, got new jobs, and Diane was having affairs with all of her new co-workers. Got pregnant again, kept this one, and had a boy named Danny. Steve actually still decided to stay for the sake of the kids and wanted to remain a father figure to Danny. But eventually, they ended up getting divorced in 1980. And this is when things got significantly more unstable. Diane started to bounce from relationship to relationship, moving in and out with different men, and then decided to become a surrogate in order to make money, even though she didn't pass all the psychiatric exams. Terrifying. But everything changed when she met a man named Nick. So this is when Diane met Robert Nickenbacher, who went by the name Nick. And she swore that this man was the love of her life. He had separated from his wife and describes the relationship as being intense and overwhelming. He eventually broke it off with her, though, because he didn't like kids. And this is when Diane became devastated and angry at her own children for getting in the way of her love. Her kids and her moved to Cottage Grove, Oregon, but still couldn't seem to forget Nick. She would obsessively write to him, and she really stopped paying attention to her kids' health. They often went hungry, went without coats in the cold. It was even said by a neighbor that Cheryl had mentioned that she was scared of her mom. Well, on Thursday, May 19th of 1983, everything went down. This story is from her perspective, by the way. They were coming home from a friend's house whenever Diane decided to take the kids on a scenic route. They did this often to explore. Hungry Like the Wolf started to play on the radio, and this is when she noticed a bushy-haired stranger signaling her over from the middle of the road. And at 10 p.m., with her kids asleep in the back of the car, she got out to talk to him, and he immediately demanded for her keys. So immediately after this stranger demanded for her keys, they had some sort of a struggle, in which he shoots all three of her kids and then shoots her in the left arm. In order to distract him, she pretends to throw her keys in the bush and then uses the keys that are actually in her hand to turn on the car and then drive wildly like a lunatic to the hospital. So she pulls up to this hospital with her kids in bad condition and all of the medical professionals that were there that night were shocked by her reactions. Her daughter Cheryl ended up passing away and Danny and Christy were literally clinging to life. And she showed no emotion at all. Not only had she wrapped her own gun wound and not her kids, but she was worried about her new car having blood on it. She seemed relieved that Cheryl was dead and was shocked when she found out that Danny, her three-year-old child, had been paralyzed. And she was only shocked because he wasn't hit in the heart. Christy had had a stroke, but she was still alive. So currently Diane was the only witness. And a lot of moms actually felt for her during this time and were even scared to leave with this man on the loose. But the public opinion didn't last for long. Even though the police were already suspicious of Diane, because she was the only witness, they had to rule out her story. So they got a composite sketch of the guy and they ended up searching the whole area where they only found some bullet casings. And her interviews during this time, if you guys have ever seen them, are so weird. Definitely worth watching. This woman was eating up the attention so much. And she made the story into this whole overcoming thing where, like, she battled the patriarchy. Ended up actually getting away from this man. Like, she's kind of the hero in the situation. But didn't show any emotion towards her kids. She went on the Oprah show and would crack jokes and have the crowd laughing. So the police ended up asking her to do a reenactment of this event. And it's truly one of the weirdest videos that you will ever see because she seems like she's having fun. Any mom being put through this would have found this to be extremely traumatic to relive this event. Instead, she's having fun, smirking, checking herself out in the car mirror, ends up hitting her arm on the steering wheel and says that almost hurt as bad as when and cuts herself off. And it seems like she was about to say as when I shot myself. So after seeing this horrific reenactment, People just flat out are not believing her anymore, especially whenever she said this whole thing took place in like five to ten seconds. And she did not take the criticism very well, literally stating, if I had shot my own children, wouldn't I have done a good job of it? She's literally gaslighting people who are letting her know that things aren't adding up. Back at the hospital, Christy is starting to improve a lot, but she's still nonverbal. Her mom ends up coming to visit her actually in her heart spikes. So the police are starting to want to have her as a witness, and they immediately get her in with a therapist. They practice by her writing down the shooter on a piece of paper and her throwing it into a fire until eventually she feels safe enough to give it to the therapist. And once she did, it said her mom. The police went to go check Diane's house, found bullet casings that matched those at the crime scene, and also found a diary with intros about Robert and talking about how Robert doesn't want kids. So then the police had their motive which Oprah even brought up to her that the man was now afraid of her because he thought she had shot her own kids. She tried to change her story a few more times, but she ended up getting arrested. So by the time it was time for her trial, she was pregnant again. She said she did it because she missed her kids and was lonely. But honestly, I feel like she did it just because she thought her sentence wouldn't be as bad. They ended up playing the song Hungry Like the Wolf in the courtroom, and Diane was jamming out to it. They showed the tapes and she showed no emotion. They even did a doll reenactment for the jury to paint a picture. 
And then Christy testified, saying that her mom had actually stopped the car when she thought they were all asleep, went to the trunk, came around, and ended up shooting them. Cheryl first, Danny second, and her last. Wrapped herself in a towel and proceeded to drive slowly to the hospital. So ultimately, Diane was found guilty. And to this day, she is still in complete denial, thinking that she is still innocent. She ended up having the baby girl in jail, and she was immediately taken from her. This daughter was adopted, and Danny and Christy were actually adopted by one of the prosecutors on the case. Overall, it was a pretty happy ending, but Diane actually successfully broke out of jail for a little bit. If you want to hear that story, come over to my Instagram. It'll be on my middle reels tab. Story time about how I got bullied my last year of high school by the most popular girl. Okay, so this is my story time. A lot of you requested one, but I'm also at the airport, so sorry for any noise. So most of my high school years were spent in Nicaragua, except for my last year of high school. You see, I booked a show in Miami, so I had to move to the U.S. I was also doing modeling commercials and a lot of radio. I enrolled in the local high school, and it was like literally culture shock for me. I had never experienced an American high school, American parties, or even like actual actually mingled with American kids. I was really shocked to see how like adult they were. For example, boys and girls were doing adult things. I was constantly being invited to parties where people were drinking, but I never actually went. So the most popular girl in school decided to befriend me in quotation marks. By the way, there were so many times where I spent lunch in the bathroom like Caddy from Mean Girls. It was like Mean Girls, but real life. So this popular girl, she was also a model and we kind of bonded over that. But behind my back, she had a bet to see which boy would take me to prom. She wanted to see how far this boy could get with me, if you know what I mean. So this popular girl who befriended me had a bet with boys to see which one would take me to prom, specifically because she wanted to see how far they would get with me on prom night, if you know what I mean. I kept saying no to every single boy. Because I was the new girl, I was constantly getting hit on, but a lot of these boys had girlfriends. Well, since I said no to every single boy, this mean girl decided to print out flyers of the show that I was in. So basically the poster of the show. And when I got to school the next day, there were so many posters of me on the walls, on the floor, with a lot of things drawn on my face. They were even in the boys' locker room. Then someone made up the rumor that I did that because supposedly I wanted everyone to know that I was a working actress. I was really embarrassed, but at the same time, I kind of thought it was funny. And this really upset the popular girl. So she decided to take it a step further. She invited me to her house one day and because I thought she was my friend, I decided to go. She cooked me pasta and we talked for a while. Then two boys show up. She told me one of them would be my prom date, part three. My so I'm at the popular girl's house and suddenly two boys show up and she says one of them was my date. That's when I told her that I did not want a date for prom. And then the boy asked to speak to me. I talked to him and I told him that I definitely did not want to go on a date with him and that I didn't even know him. That's when he told me that my friend had set everything up and she told him that I liked him a lot. Well, I told him that that was not true and I basically went home. A few days later, she started a rumor saying that I was totally in love with her and that I forced her to kiss me. Yeah, she's uh, crazy. That's when people started calling me horrible, horrible names. But the joke's on her because I was so used to getting bullied in Nicaragua. After school one day, she comes up to me and starts telling me why she doesn't like me. She was so angry, she started to cry. She said that she was the pretty girl and that she was the model in school. I literally just walked away from her. I went to prom with no date, which was so fun. I graduated and then I kept working. Guess who slid into my DMs a few weeks ago asking to hang out? That's right, the popular girl. I think she must have seen my TikTok or something. Did I actually go out with her and tell her what I think? Or should I just leave her on red? You guys decide. I was pregnant with my brother's baby and didn't know. So I was 16 years old back then. Keep in mind, I wasn't educated as I was now. When I was younger, I always felt like there was some missing part of me. I don't know why, but I just did. I always dreamed of having a twin brother or at least another sibling, but it just never occurred to me. So I asked my mom one day if I could have a sibling, and she said no and freaked out on me for absolutely no reason. I ended up crying. I was five, mind you. She came back and apologized, but I never forgot about that conversation. So years passed, and one day this new kid transferred to my school. His name was Michael. Me and him made eye contact, and it felt like I was looking into a mirror. I talked to him and said we looked like siblings, and we both laughed. I asked him what his parents looked like. He showed me, and his mom was a redhead, and his dad had brown hair like him and green eyes. He looked like his parents, so my suspicions went away. Me and him became friends, then best friends, from the course of freshman year to sophomore year. Everyone thought we were siblings. We laughed at the idea, but never officially said if we did or not. So one day, we were at a friend's party, and we decided to play spin the bottle. He spinned it, and it pointed at me, so we had to go into the closet and kiss. So he spun the bottle, and it landed on me. We both laughed and said we would be quick. So we went into the closet and looked at each other and laughed. We kissed, and I felt a spark, like when you like someone. Then I kissed him again, and then we stopped and just stared at each other. The timer went off when we came out. They asked how it was and we just said it was a peck. The friendship became weird after that. I would get jealous if he was around any other girls and he would make it obvious that he did if I was around any other guys. I suggested that we have a talk because this was getting weird. We both said how we felt and we came up with the conclusion that we liked each other and we started dating. Everyone shipped us at school. We dated for five months and then took our relationship to another level. We decided we were ready for intercourse and did our thing. We used protection of course, nothing crazy. So one day out of nowhere I started feeling nauseous and got word cravings. I told him how I was feeling and how bad it 
it was. He thought I might have been pregnant. So we got a pregnancy test and it was positive. We freaked out because we did it with a condom for the first time. We wanted to keep it because I was pro-life and we thought we were so in love, so we obviously had to tell our parents. So we set a date to meet both of our parents and say that we were pregnant. We did it first with Michael's parents and they were pretty accepting. They said they helped financially, but I would have to drop out of school and I had no issue with it. So next was my mom. And I was nervous, but I wanted to do it. So as soon as I got to the front door, my mom opened the door and looked shocked. She then looked mad, dragged me in by the arm, and slammed the door. She yelled and questioned why I was with him, and I said that he was my boyfriend. My mom said I couldn't date him anymore. I questioned her, and she wouldn't budge. So, I told her I was pregnant right then and there. I thought maybe she'd tell me why. She looked at me in shock and broke down in front of me. I asked her what was wrong, and she said that it was my brother. She said she gave him away long ago when I was born because she couldn't afford the both of us and named him Michael. She told me I had to have an abortion because the baby would become deformed. And if I didn't, she'd kick me out of the house. I cried and cried. One day, she took me out of school and brought me to Planned Parenthood. She forced me to have an abortion. I was so heartbroken. I told Michael we are brother and sister and we broke up but are still friends. We'll tell his parents we are related after we finish high school. Follow for more story times and follow my Instagram as well. Click the link in my bio for $50 for Roblox.